Welcome in. Good evening, good day, good night, whatever part of the world you're visiting from. Welcome in. God bless you. Sandra Knowles is in. God bless you, Sandra. Sandel, Nadia, hallelujah, God bless you. Jennifer Dean is in. God bless you, Chantel Bethel. Bonita is watching. How you doing, Bonita? God bless you, woman of God. Lady Christian is on. Praise the Lord. For all of you, I'm so excited about our teaching today. Amen? And I want to tell you guys that we're going to continue with uh, Marine Spirits. Uh, I think it's part two, part three. Amen. Donna White is on. Danielle Knowles is on. Praise the Lord. So we're going to go right into it. And then, Father, we cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, we just thank you for this teaching. And we thank you for what you're about to do. I seal up this teaching with the blood of Jesus. And I cover everyone and their families on this live with the blood of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. So we, we're discussing uh, marine spirits and marine powers. Uh, this is by no means a new teaching. And for the benefit of you who are here for the first time or catching up vegan, it is still be obvious. Marine powers have been around for ancient, from the ancient of times, you know? They existed from the beginning of time. And mommy water existed from the beginning of time because they were also known as the powerful ones, or the Abkalu, the Abkalu, or they were said they were small Gs because they were literally above the, the clouds and the heavens. They were in the first heavens and the second heavens, and they came down, all right, and some of them went into the waters. The fact that their body is based on 70% water, I would say even 80% water, Let's just know that there's an affinity for the marine spirit, for marine or aquatic powers, or the Apkalu. The Apkalu was a class of beings that would go around in ships or spaceships or water ships or submarines. You think submarine is new? No, these things have been around for from the beginning, from the beginning of time. And these uh, space-faring ships and underwater ships are... Uh, 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 something that the earth is copying and human is copying and just catching, it, catching up now thousands of years later. But they've always been around. And these beings were known to uh, abduct and kidnap people. They were known to kidnap and abduct people for the longest time. Hallelujah. And many people have strange tales of being under the water for years. There's a lady who uh, finally uh, put out an APB on her. She went missing. Trying to find out she was living under the sea. She was abducted by uh, by a spirit, took her to the marine kingdom, and this marine power allowed her to live there, but also bred her. They wanted her for her eggs. They wanted her for, uh, for her ability to procreate, and they were doing experiments on her under the kingdom of the sea. Under the sea. Amen. You see Little Mermaid and there's no remake with the black people or the colored Little Mermaid. These things existed from the beginning of time. And many people are experiencing so much attacks in their dreams, so much setbacks, so much fighting. It is because they're being attacked by the water mama, the water mommy, mommy spirit that is fighting them. This water mommy spirit is also called marine, marine demons. So many people there, they're being fought in their dreams. 99% of your dreams that you're being fought in is because of these marine spirits. These marine spirits are very, 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 very persistent. They're very dangerous. And most of the times when they're coming at you, they're coming at you for, uh, for, uh, for a reason, all right? Most of them are coming at you for a reason because they want to keep you from ever experiencing true breakthrough, amen? They want to stop you from receiving the blessings and the uh, and the increase that God wants to give you, but also wants to stop you from ever receiving your permanent breakthrough, all right? To the point where you are frustrated with God, you're frustrated with prophets, you're frustrated with, with the people of God, amen? <laughs> because sometimes many of you 
have been called a marine prophetess or a marine prophet. And so they've just, they've just been killing you in terms of, of just taking you to the cleaners, taking a lot of your money, you know, literally just, you know, you don't see anything happen, just a bunch of money pouring out of them. I'm not just talking about a little bit of money, I'm talking about the like tone of thousands of dollars. Yeah, many people are literally sending money away to the people. You know, one lady came up to me, she's a prophet. Everything you said was true. She said, can you pray for me? Because I want to send, I want to send, I want to send $500 to this man from Africa. I said, what? So yeah, so everything you tell me is true. But now I try to raise $500 to send to this man because he told me the same thing you tell me. <laughs> Listen, I said, woman of God, you send $500 to them? I said, did the Lord leave you to do that? No, 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 that's what he's asking. Because you got to clear me. I said, well, let me tell you something, woman of God. I already told you what the Lord is going to do for you. Yet you asking me to pray for you to find $500 that you do not have so you can go so to a man that you don't know that wants to clear you but you don't know him but yet here is a prophet telling you this is what the deal is I recommended some books to her she looked at me like I was crazy and she said okay I can see you later okay <laughs> she said me and my daughter we, 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 we got half of the money already so now I have my, my check coming in I can put it together alright some people are so deceived by these marine prophets and prophetess alright I'm not trying to create confusion I'm just telling you what I've experienced on many occasions, all right, many occasions where people say, "Prophet, the word of God you told me was true." Prophet, everything you said is true. But you know, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over here to this this uh, individual. Uh, yeah, I just sold three grand. I just sold two grand. I just sold five grand. I said, "Well, praise, praise God." You know what, what happened? Nothing happened. As a matter of fact, they they keep hitting me up for more money, and now they just every day they call me and bug on my phone and telling me this could happen to me and that could happen to me. Because people are connected with these marine prophets and prophetess. And they are working for Dagon. You know? Dagon is a principality that was worshipped by the Philistines. But he's still here today. So is Molech. So is Chemosh. So is Am Amon. All right? Yeah. So is is this, this uh, deity called the Storm God. Yes, he was a storm and lightning God. Lightning deity. They're still here. And they're doing the same thing. And these people are sending all of their hard-earned cash to them. All of their hard-earned money. And as a matter of fact, they're going deeper and deeper into debt. And many of them, they've seen the prophetic and the word come to pass over their life concerning the ministry. But yet they would never say, my God, you know, we want to sow into your life or we want to give here. Because they are being, what, deceived by spirits. They're being deceived by spirits. Recently, a woman told me, she's a prophet, you know, she said, uh, you know, said, man, he said, you remember you told me about the word of God, you know, about how many guys I went through and none of them really wanted to marry me. So I told her, I said, your husband is not here, woman of God. I said, I said, your husband is is going to be from someplace else. I, I'm perceiving that, you know, because she said the word of God, uh, 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 man of God finally came to pass like several years later. I didn't see her for a while. I saw her like three years later. Guess what? Her husband had to come from all around the world to meet her. You see how God will cause you to find your bones? You see how you see why it's so good to be connected to a man or woman of God who hears from God and will direct you. They're not going to make you lazy, but they'll give you assignments and, and, and encourage you to grow in God and to seek the Lord for yourself too. And not to just have you as a spiritual baby, but to cause you to grow, push you. Many people want you just to do all the hard work for them and they don't do nothing. And they don't care. They wait so they become spiritual uh, arrested. Spiritually arrested. They, they, they remain midgets in the spirit. And guess what happened? She introduced me to the man. I think it was week before last. And the man is a is an Australian man from 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 all the way from Australia. Have a yacht boat and everything. Came here and when he saw, he said, he told someone, said, "This is my wife." Isn't it amazing? He said, "This is my wife. I can marry her." And they are married now, and they're working together, and they've been traveling the world on his yacht. I say to you too. God will send your husband. God will send your your mate, but he can send it at the right time. And he can send it when he pleases. And then you can't stop God. You can't slow him down. And you can't, you can't, you can't rush him either. You cannot rush God. Amen. And some people try to rush God. And they end up in these marine prophets and marine witches' hands. And they sift them of everything. And they turn them around. And they dump them out. And then they mock them. They mock them after a while and laugh at them. They laugh at the calamity. They laugh at them. Yes, many times they laugh at them. Make fun of them. Because they are they are mockers, you hear me? Marine powers mock you. Let's 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 look at some scriptures. Jeremiah 
Job is one of the most powerful books there is, and also one of the oldest books. All right, but Job was attacked by Satan. All right, and he took away his his all his livelihood, killed his sons and daughters. You know, he had he had seven sons and three daughters, and he killed and he destroyed all of them because he got permission from God. All right, but Job lived on the land. But why is it that why is it that that God is talking so much about Leviathan? Could it be that God could it be that Satan was using Leviathan to, to finish Job off? Why would he even mention Leviathan? And why that nowhere in the Bible does it talk about Leviathan so much as it is, as it does in, in Job? It gives a very powerful uh, picture of this, under, this underwater aquatic Akalu spirit that we're dealing with. Are you guys taking notes? It says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Canst thou put a hook in his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplication unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? You know what it means? It means that it means the Leviathan is, is prideful. He ain't gonna come to you nice and humble. They can come to you and they can be very, very, very hard with you. Harsh words. They can tell you hateful things because there's pride in their heart. Amen? And, and they will not entreat you and, and approach you nice. They will approach you mean. Have you ever had someone approach you really mean? And, and they approach you with, with, you know, with just a bad attitude. That's Leviathan spirit. Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Leviathan will not partner with you. They will not partner with you. You will help them as much as you want. They will not partner with you. They will use you, but they will break their covenants. They will break all their covenants with you. And they will turn around and tell you you never did nothing for them. No matter what you do for someone under that marine spirit, they will tell you you never did nothing for me. Yeah? You could give them a car, a house, a home. You could take money of your accounts. You could you could buy them all sorts of stuff. You could even give them your heart, liver, and spleen. And they will say, more, more, more. And then they'll turn around and tell you, you've never done nothing for me. You, 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 you lousy. You, 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 you ain't worth nothing. You're nothing. That's, that's what a woman, that's what a man was telling me his wife would say to him. And, and I said, that little, I said, that little, that little, that little, uh, a meek looking woman who don't say nothing much? He said, you need to live with her. He said, listen, man of God. So that woman used to talk to me so bad. She said, tell me, you ain't worth nothing. You a loser. I said, you, you can't do nothing right. And she said, he told her, she told her, she would be telling him this for almost 20 years. You are worthless. You can't do nothing. You, 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 you'll never amount to nothing. You ain't making enough money. You can't do this. You can't do that. I, I, and, and there was never a day that she didn't lambaste, ridicule, or mock him. That's what Leviathans do. They mock you. You know what she was doing to that man and his, his self-worth and his character? She was literally allowing that spirit that is that is so powerful. Even though she is petite and small and looks easy going, she was a monster in the spirit because she would continually shut this man down and talk to him bad and speak in, uh, uh, curses into his life. But yet people on the outside would look at her and they'll say, you know, this woman, this woman is such a sweetie. You know, because she has an appearance of being easy. She has an outward appearance that everybody will say, you know, that man treating her bad. And, you know, that, that man will come upside her head. Or just one day lash out at her and, and just, you know, put something on her. They'll say, that man is such a wicked man. Look what he did to that, that poor, easy, sweet lady. Not knowing that this woman was a monster. Not knowing this woman would berate him. Not knowing this woman would, would talk bad to him. You know, berate his manhood. Talk nasty to him. Tell him things that you can't have, you can't do. All right? This, this, this treat him so horrible, all right? And I told, I told, I told him, I told him that as a boy, my, my God, I said, listen, you know, I, I am happy for you that you know you reconciling or you're working it out. But as for me, if I, if I, if from what I see and from the response I got, you know, several, uh, I think several months ago, I said that is a hard task for you, my man. But God bless you anyhow, because sometimes you need to do things for the gospel's sake. Because there are some people, they look easy. But they're not easy. They look feminine, but there is a man in the spirit. See, because the marine spirits, they are neither female nor male. They take on whatever position suits them for the occasion. So if you're a man, they can come to you as a woman. If you're a woman, they can come to you as a man. But they take on these positions to lure you in. And they come as the most attractive people. Everybody who encountered a marine spirit or a mommy water spirit or a spirit that has made covenants with them in their past, they will tell you that these people are beautiful. They are absolutely stunning. Anything that you can want in your life, 
anything you could want in your in your mind, anything you could want in your heart, they would look like they they look like your greatest fantasy. Amen. They look like everything you ever wanted in a man or a woman because they know how to uh, to appear to you to entice you because they want to draw you up. Amen. And it says, shall shall the companions make a, a banquet for him? Shall they part among him the merchants? In other words, I don't care what you try to be nice to Leviathan. I don't care how much you try to be nice to Leviathan. I don't care how much you try to uh, to appease him, be nice to him, uh, you know, deal with him, uh, you know, even give him stuff, do things for them. They will turn around and says, I don't care. I don't want this no more. I am tired of this. I don't like this. I'm not happy. Listen, you cannot please that spirit, mighty God. Many people are suffering in silence. And they cannot please that spouse. They cannot please that, 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 that person. For some reason, that person started beating them. I have had so many people call me in the last two weeks that their husband started beating them for nothing. All of a sudden, my husband started to um, and bounce up on me and beat me and beat me. And when at one point in time, he was a very good husband. I've had men of God call me and say, one time my wife was such a, a great wife. And now all of a sudden, she's starting to act weird. She doesn't want the relationship no more. She's tired. She wants to move out. She, she, she wants to go her own way. He wants to go his own way. Don't you know that that source is not natural? Don't you know that there are marine agents that are fighting your marriage? Don't you know that there are powers that in your bloodline are fighting? See, this ain't for everybody. This teaching can be for everybody. But this, this is for people who really want to get set free. All right? There are people who would not even, even, even understand this teaching because they are already under Leviathan's grip. What, what are you talking about? That's foolishness. I, I don't believe them things. I don't believe them things. God already do it. That's it. And that's finished. That time they marriage falling apart. That time they, their life falling apart. But they refuse to look at it because they've been blinded by pride and arrogance. That's why some of them cannot say, I'm sorry. Listen, I messed up. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, you might as well go, you might as well go uh, and try to make a trip to the moon by yourself. You mean? Without a rocket. Because it is the hardest thing for them to do in the world. To ever apologize and say, I'm sorry, hey, forgive me. And that's one of the things with Leviathan. They will hold a grudge with you for 30 years and you won't know it. They will disguise themselves and they will hide in your presence. And you think thinking everything cool, but they're holding a grudge against you. They will not come to you and say, listen, I have this against you. I just want to I just want to, you know, let you know this is what I'm feeling. I don't know if it's the truth, but according to my perception, I felt like this against you. And I'm holding you in. Or I got this against you. No, they'll nurse that. They'll nurse that. They'll nurse that. They'll nurse that. They'll start to pray against you in secret. Why do you think some of you are feeling such bobs? All right? Why are you feeling such bobs, such fight? Why are you feeling such things happening to you? Why do you feel like you're under oppression? Because there are people that are secretly releasing evil prayers against you. They are praying from a marine perspective. These marine spirits are uh, uh, enticing them to develop a hatred for you. Because you are a man or woman of God. Do you have a marine agent in your office? Do you know what it is to have a marine agent in your office? They are full of pride. You can't tell them nothing. Everything they say must be done according to how they want it to, to be done. You can't even put a hook in their nose to draw them out. You can't even appease them. You can't even make friends with them. They'll be friends with you today and tomorrow they'll hate you. Then tomorrow they'll like you again and the next day they hate you. And the minute you correct them or try to tell them, let's look at it a different way, they turn around and report you. They turn around and make you public enemy number one. Then they turn around and tell you threaten their life. These are marine spirits that are operating in the power of Leviathan. There's a spirit called Jezebel Leviathan. Leviathan Jezebel spirit. Listen, guys, I want to tell you, these spirits are very persuasive when they want something or they want to get something from you. They could be so charming, so beautiful and so nice until they get what they want. And they could be very popular and they could be very, 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 very brilliant and smart. And they can be puffed up with, you know, listen, nobody's good as me. I am the best that there ever was. Yeah, I, I can run this office with my eyes closed. I have everything in order. Everything I do is perfect. All my memos and all my emails and everything I do is perfect. You cannot make a mistake. I cannot make a mistake. That, that's, I, I'm, just too, I'm just too good with the stuff I use. I, I'm, I'm just too awesome. They can't contain me. You know, I'm just bigger than this office. Nobody else could do it like I could do it. Have you ever worked around a person like that or been attached to a person in your office or in your work environment? And every time you look around, they send in a memo. Every time you look around, they recording you secretly. These are marine powers, guys, that are working. And they've been sent to ruin the office. They've been sent to control and manipulate the office because they can't get their way. Mighty God. 
I decree and declare anybody that has you, has you in a marine configuration. When I say marine configuration, I mean that you are caught up in a circle where you are in a marine configuration from these Apkalu, from the, from from Dagon, and from these Mami water spirits, and from these spirits that live in the ravine and live in the lakes and live in the rivers and the beds and the sea waters. Now, if you like the sea water, I just want to clarify this because someone asked me on the last live, I think two lives ago, they said, if I like the beach and I like to go out there and pray and sit by the waters, am I a marine agent? No, no, no. It doesn't mean that if you like the beach and enjoy the water, praise God. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, you by the waters, you, you just, people could take things out of context and they could try to mess people up. No. If you like the beach and you like the sea, that's great. Amen. Many people get revelation by going by the waters and sitting down. That does not mean that you are a marine agent. The only thing that makes you a marine agent is when you let people who are who say they know how to do things take you down there and bathe you and then make you do certain things with certain things they bring to you and 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 and, and they try to invoke certain things over you. No. As a matter of fact, I do a lot of baptism in the seawater. I take people to the seawater because I don't have no place else to do it. I don't have no tub, I don't have no uh, no place to do it, so I take them to the waters, amen. John the Baptist baptized in the in the in the in the lakes, right? He baptized in, in waters, amen. It's just that the enemy has now made everybody oh he ran he ran the beach. He uh, she or she or the beach, uh, uh she's a marine agent. No, you gotta balance, guys. You gotta balance. Not everybody who's there join God's creation is doing something foolish, amen. There are many people who live in the forest, all right. They they don't worship no nature god, they don't worship the elementals. They don't worship forest deities. They don't worship these things. They just love nature as God as God has told them to get back to nature because there's healing in the nations, healing in the leaves of the nations, all right? They don't worship the plants. They don't They don't, they don't have visions of, and go into trance where they communicate with plants, all right, and call up sea gods. So if you see that happening to you and people are, uh, people are telling you that, you know, hey, listen, they go to this one, they could, they, could, they, could, they, could, they could communicate with the waters and they could call up to certain things, run from them. All right, you know you're dealing with a marine agent. All right, you're dealing with someone who is is uh is deeply uh into into darkness. All right, run from them, shun them, avoid them. All right, avoid them like the plague. But if you enjoy nature and you enjoy the beach and you enjoy sitting in your car, you know, um, just eating your lunch, talking to God, praying out there, you know, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Don't get it twisted. All right. Some of them I do my broadcast out there. Some of them I do broadcast on the beach or after I finish walking, exercising. I do a broadcast, but I can imagine people, people are so, they're so immature, that's why you can't even teach them deep things, because they, 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 they'll get twisted, oh, he's teaching all oh, new age stuff, oh, new age stuff, new age stuff, because they aren't ready for different levels of revelation, so you have to teach them like little children, like little babies, and so they go back to the basic stuff, because they'll, they'll holler that you're teaching, you're teaching a different teaching, oh, you, you go going over to this department, you're going over here, uh, I don't want to lose my one soul, well, that's, that's fine, you know, Praise God, if you feel like you don't want to lose your one soul, then, you know, just, just kindly move on. Praise God. You know, we love you still, but, you know, we don't want to, uh, we don't want to hinder you. We don't want to stop you. We, we don't want to stop you from being blessed. Amen? Find someone else who you could go under, because it's all for the Lord anyhow. And at any day, the Lord will judge. Amen? No man, no man knows what you, uh, what you say before the Lord. Amen? Because some people are not at that level to handle certain things. So not everybody who goes to the water or the sea, or even the river, they're doing something with marine powers. Come on, guys, I need you to mature quickly. Mature. I want you to grow up in the things of God. Because otherwise, you just teach basic stuff. All right? You can't teach deep things because they can't handle deep things. And they can't handle deep revelations. Because they're still at that place where they're still babes in Christ. And so before you know, they run around telling people, you teach them the funny doctrine and there's not of God. They they also said the two. The Sanhedrin and the Pharisees said the same thing. Now look at him, he teaching a funny doctrine. Where you get a doctrine from? Who taught you this? And so they killed him for his doctrine. Because he had an intimate relationship with the Lord and he's teaching deep things they couldn't comprehend. So they, they, they was like, okay, you ain't teaching what we teaching, so how you get this doctrine? Who taught you? And where you, where you coming from with this new teaching? And there was no new teaching. It's just that he had a revelation of the Spirit with the Lord and they killed him for that. They, they literally killed him for that. Because he said, I'm one with the Father. Because I'm one with God. Because I know him on a different level that you know him from. I have an intimate relationship with him. I walk with him. I talk with him daily. You don't. You don't know him like that. And so what happens is they kill them. So a person who was free in the spirit, they were to some people who are religiously bound, and that's the religious spirit. That's the water spirit too. The water spirit will have you so religious and have you so bound in certain ways that you can't do nothing. All right, you can't do nothing because it'll have you feeling you're sinning. You know, God didn't come to bind you up with certain laws. 
He come to free you indeed. Amen. And so people have people now keeping all these things. If they miss one thing and they miss one uh, one thing of the law now, people are going back to this to this thing where they're keeping everything. And if you miss one thing now, you you in trouble. You know, you're longer saved. That's from the devil. That's not of God. Amen. And so God is now freeing people from these different spirits that are trying to fight them. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to get this. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I'm looking at the rabbit of the spirit. I'm seeing where someone is about to get an amazing breakthrough. Excuse my eyes, water, I don't know why. Someone's about to get an amazing breakthrough. Because you've been asking God for this breakthrough for the longest time. And it's, it's been like you have half breakthroughs and half blessings, and they never fully materialize. God has said in the season, they will fully materialize. I cancel every satanic deposit and load an invitation they sent to your life, even from, from you seeing yourself in the marine kingdom. You see yourself in the water, you see yourself in the water, you see yourself always battling these things in the water, you see yourself hanging out in the seas, you always in the sea. You know, when God called me from Nashville, he said, man of God, I know he's a real man of God, because I always find myself in the sea. I'm always in the sea, I'm always in the water. I'm always in the sea, I'm always in the water. That means that, that means that there's powers that don't want to see you prosper. They don't want to see you make it. They want to mess your life up. Then they're trying to stop you from growing in God. Mighty God, hallelujah. But the Lord said you will come out of that situation. And the Lord has said in this season, you're going to find yourself getting your business. Someone you wanted a business. Thank you, Jesus. And you wanted God to bless you with a business and open a door for you. Let me tell you something. You see those marine powers and those marine uh, narcissists, those Leviathan spirits, they're very narcissistic. Let me tell you something. If you find yourself to be involved with a, with a marine agent, listen, for every time you try to win an argument with them and try to prove your point, they will flip the script on you. These demon spirits that operate through people, they'll flip the script on you for every single time. And I decree and declare right now that anyone who has the unfortunate desire to be in with a marine agent, I cancel it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse these foul spirits of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel the plans of your life. I curse everything they've been saying against you. Hallelujah, Lord. Not one of the plans will, 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 will manifest against you. There's someone you've been feeling like you're going to die soon. This spirit will be telling you and whispering in your ears that you're going to die soon. I cancel that plan over your life. I cancel that plan over your life. In the name of Jesus, you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Some of you, one or two of you on this life, your foot has been swelling up for nothing. Mighty God. Your foot has been swelling up for nothing. Your foot has been swelling up for nothing. This spirit will tell you you're going to die. I cancel that over your life right now. I rebuke that over your life right now. I cancel that over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree that you will make it. You will live. You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. You will live, mighty God. There's someone right here, right now watching, right now. You're looking in the realms of the Spirit asking God, God, what happened? Why am I like this? But the Lord is showing that there's a weapon formed against you. This weapon is called breast cancer. Yes, it formed against you. It's called breast cancer. It's called breast cancer. I cancel that breast cancer over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. When you're dealing with a marine agent, let me tell you something. The best thing you can do is a soft answer. Do not engage them in arguments. Do not engage the marine uh, agents in arguments, especially the narcissists. The narcissists that are Leviathan spirits, do not engage them in arguments. Agree with them quickly. Yes, yeah, okay, no problem, man. Okay, yeah, everything is good. No, okay, well, thank you. Appreciate that. All right, God bless you. Move on. Do not get into arguments with them because the minute you get in arguments with them, you get on their turf. Agree with them quickly and get out of that. I cancel, I cancel that disease they set against your body. Woo! Mighty God. I cancel the disease they set against your body. Oh my God. Someone, they set a disease against your body. They send this thing to, to attack you. They send this thing to fight you. Mighty God. Hallelujah. I command that giant spirit that has been fighting you. I command that twisting spirit, twisting the marriage. Do you know that there's someone being attacked? Your marriage is being attacked right now. Do you know that's a twister? It's twisting what you said. It's twisting what you said. It's twisting the wife's mind towards you. It's twisting the husband's words. It's twisting what the husband said to the wife and what the wife says to the husband. Because in the realm of the spirit, 
The enemy wants the enemy wants wants both of you to just say forget it. I give up on this marriage. And guess what? You would have been married maybe 30 years, 20 years, 25 years. Just walk out. I gone. Because of a disagreement. Because of certain things. Do, do you know? Do you know that they will come in your dreams? And they will make you polygamous in your dream. What I mean by that? It'll make you want to see everybody else but your husband or wife. It'll make you entertain lust for other men and other women apart from your husband. And it will make you treat your husband like a small boy or your wife like a small girl because it is a sign against your body. I cancel every spiritual power of the Raphiams. Yes, they were the Raphiams. The Raphiams came down from heaven. And or we call them the Watcher or the Abkalus. They came down. And they decided that they want to take men, oh, sorry, the children of men, the daughters of men, as their wife. Yes, it's biblical. And they bred with them. And some of them came out as mermaids, mermaids. Some of them came out as mersnake. You know what a mersnake is? She looked like a she looked like a woman from the top up, but and the bottom she's a snake. She's a python from the bottom up. Many people are worshiping these people as gods. They were mighty men of old. They talk about it in Genesis six. They talk about how they came down. The watchers came down. They talk about it in the book of Enoch, the real book of Enoch. They talk about it in Jude. They talk about it in First Peter, uh, First Peter as well. They talk about how they kept not their first estate, and they're chained in hell. All right, but the word hell is a mistranslation, or it is a different translation. The word is Hades, but they're they're they're, uh, they're in Tartarus. You know what Tartarus is? Tartarus is another level from hell. Is where they keep the gods, kings, or the king gods. Or those who, who were gods or rulers gods because to us they were godlike in their powers. Many people worshiped them, all right, and they were thought to be gods because of the power and the strength. They were men of renown and they would worship them. And I talked about this in the last two teachings about how they would worship them from the waters because they were magnificent creatures. People think they were ugly. No, they were beautiful looking creatures. You hear me? Some of them had light all around their face, some of them had halos all around their head. Why do you think they get the thing with the halo? The halo, all right, halos. That is a representation of an occult power. All right, many of the of the people you see with halos around their head, it's supposed to rep represent illumination, but it's the serpent, it's a serpent power of the raw Boris, or the serpent swallowing his tail, or the or Yomangan, or Yomangan, the world serpent, or the world breaker that eats the, that will eat the world at the end of days, that will fight in the Ragnarok. Yes, everybody have a version of this teaching, and it went to different nations, and it talked about the deluge and the and the flood. The flood powers, some of them survived. Not all of them died. Some of them went to the bottom of the ocean. Some of them went to the waters. Some of them were after the deluge, before the deluge, and afterwards even some of them survived. Some of them survived and they went into the waters. You hear me? Some of them are living amongst us now. They carry the gene of the serpent. They carry the gene of those demonic powers that lived in the ocean, the dragon that abides in the sea, the Leviathan spirit. They have a kingdom that is established, that is beyond the earthly dimension to understand. When people go to that dimension and they see, they can't describe it. They don't know how to describe the operations because it's beyond human comprehension. The vastness of that empire. Many times they only go to one segment of the empire. The empire is vast. The underwater world is, is far sophisticated, light years beyond our understanding right now. The only thing that equivocates to that or is way beyond that is the glory of God. You hear me? Their kingdom is so sophisticated. Their technology is so advanced. All right? They will seem to be gods. And now they're releasing this technology upon the face of the earth. They're coming and they're marrying. They're marrying sorcery with technology. And they're creating the singularity. Who do you think is doing that? The Mur powers. The Mur powers. The Apkalus. They're coming back for showdown with God. Yes, it is coming to a culmination. It's coming to a head. This is what they're doing. These beings... Uh, in a place called Tartarus, as high as the heavens above earth, so far is Hades, uh, so far as Hades above Tartarus. Did you understand? There's a level that you can't even understand in the realm of the spirit where these beings are being kept. As far as earth is from heaven, so far is Tartarus from hell. There's a level where they can't even go into hell. They can't even go to Hades because Hades will be too small for them. These beings are so vast. And so ridiculously strong and so ridiculously wicked. They had to put them in a prison, a bottomless pit that is called Tartarus. It is a level below Hades that they send there. They can't even go to the regular uh, uh, prison in hell or Hades. They have to go to something called a maximum security that only the deranged, evil, wicked powers uh, uh, are, are sent because there's nothing that could keep them. 
They are now falling continuously. Do you know what it is to be falling forever? Do you know what it is to be falling forever? You are falling but could never ever land. You are falling and falling and falling. This is where God is going to hold them until he's ready to judge them. This is where God is holding them until he's ready to deal with them. But they're projecting their force. They're projecting their spirit. They're projecting their essence onto the earth and to agents that are worshiping them. They're also, they're also getting ready to be unleashed because there is, there is something that is opening the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit will be open. And these beings coming up, they look like scorpions. All right, they have the face of beautiful men. <sighs> But they have this blessed plate that are that are like iron. Then they have wings that they can fly, and they can have spears in their hand. They can sting people. These are spiritual beings that are living in the bottom, uh, in the bottomless pit. That will be a uh, loose. And one of the beings that is the king over them is called Apollyon, Apollyon, or Abaddon in in um, Abaddon in in, uh, in Hebrew, or Apollyon in Greek. It's the same one and same God. Amen. These gods are living. In that ram, but they are projecting the essence, and they're slowly gaining ascendancy because they're waiting. Why do you think they like uh, October uh, 31st? Because it's the essence of their spiritual powers at nighttime when they open the veil. The veil is rent asunder. This is not new teaching. This has been around for thousands of years. That's why they work the most heinous and wicked arts and crafts at that time because of the because of the alignment of the planet and the stars. And the hosts, stars and planets means angels. Yes, they're starry bodies and heavenly bodies, but they also mean angelic beings that are like planets, that are named after planets. Saturn, uh, Uranus, Jupiter. Yes, these are gods or planets that contain and house the gods. Yes, they would worship Jupiter. They would worship Mars. All right, Mars, the planet Mars is named after God. It is the god of war in the Hebrew, uh, sorry, in the Roman pantheon. He's, he's Mars, all right? They would Mars or march towards him. They would march for him in his name. He's the god of war, also named Ares. Ares, these are all Apkalus. These are all water gods or water demons that have now made their abode on earth. They are aquatic amphibious beings that have come to earth. You hear me? And now they are, they are, they are releasing the full brunt of their demonic marine powers on earth. That's why many people are fighting themselves, losing their religion. Many people are not uh, saved anymore. Some of them are going crazy. Some of them have lost their minds. Some of them don't want to do Christianity anymore. Some of them stop preaching the gospel. Some of them wear off into different strange philosophies where they're no longer preaching the whole counsel of God. They're preaching a different gospel. They're pre preaching a, a different Jesus because they're preaching the marine Jesus. There's a marine Jesus too. There's a marine Jesus that look exactly and mimic the real Christ. There's a marine power that's coming on the face of the earth to walk. That's why they bring up movies like Namor. Aquaman, one, two, and three. They're bringing up movie Namor and all these water gods. Why? Because they know the power of the marine. They know the power of the marine spirit and ram. And so they have been tasked. And see, what happens is they make it very easy for children to watch. Amen? Because it's very palatable. It's very entertaining. They, they entertain you. All right, there's a good storyline. The characters, you know, you get you get endeared to the characters. You know, and, and, and of course, they're always banishing some evil. And, you know, and they always have to do with some evil. Yes, they make it very, very entertaining, and they make it very, very, very uh, 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 hypnotic to watch. You find yourself being drawn in, amen. And they find themselves, uh, as a matter of fact, the children find themselves now playing with these toys. All right. Not all toys are demonic. Don't get me wrong, guys. Please don't say prophet say that. All right. I had toys when I was small. I like toys. I like to sculpt. You know, I like to, I like to uh, draw. These are okay. It's what you put behind it. All right. It's a spiritual force. Many of them have been on altars that they've blessed. All right. And so when they come in the house, they create problems because some of them are literally gods that they enter in. I'm not talking about Elohim. I'm talking about demonic gods. Amen. <laughs> and if they come into your house, they have a legal right because first of all, you must give them permission. That's why a curse was the cause. It's like a bird in flight. It cannot land. Costless shall it come. That means that if there's a curse operating, that means there's somewhere there's an open door. You might not know of it, but I guarantee you, if you check your generation, if you check your generation, if you check your family line, if you check uh, uh, your bloodline, you'll find that there are some things that is going on that you cannot understand. I want to tell you right now, this marine kingdom is 
very, very insidious. If you find yourself every night swimming in the marine, swimming in the sea, swimming in the water, you are underwater battling things, you are underwater fighting things, you are underwater fighting strange creatures, that means that they are targeting you. That means that someone who might not like you, who don't want to see you prosper, who has a problem with you, they've decided that they're going to contact marine powers to deal with you. And they are contacting these powers and they are they are making sacrifices. So you'll find yourself in a, in a, in a part of town known for their demonic stuff. You'll find yourself in a part of town. Well, why, why down in this area? This area is known for their wickedness. This area is known for the witches. The witches uh, live in this area. And you find yourself in that area not knowing why you're in that area. It's because they've summoned your spirit. When they're summoning your spirit there and you find yourself entertaining people from that area. That means that your prayers, your prayers have been uh, 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 really causing them trouble. It's been irritating them. It's been, it's been causing them so much trouble. They've decided now that they're going to make someone not like you. They're going to they're gonna stir up someone who don't like you and who probably had a problem with you anyhow to now attack you. That's why sometimes you make friends with a person and everything is going good. And when you look again, the person bring some accusation against you, or they're turned off from you, or they stop speaking to you. That's because the marine powers, the spirit spouse and spirit husband have gotten involved now and turned that person off from you and turn it on uh, that person to hate you now. When once you were cool with them, you didn't do them nothing. You didn't do them nothing. So you wonder, you know, did I say something about them? You go through your whole over. You know, you apologize and things. Listen, I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry I said this. What happened, man? You know, we was cool. You know, hey, did someone say something that I said about you? And they, they, no, 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 I just don't like you, man. I, I know that time is up. I don't know why. You don't return their calls. They're blocking you. This thing happened to them. Why? That's because, that's because someone who's a marine agent whispered something about you, said something that you do, and they made it seem like it's so true. Then they turn off on you. Why? Because that's what they were doing. It's, it's the enemy will raise up people to misunderstand you, misquote you. There'll be miscommunication. There'll be misrepresentation. And there'll be misdirection. So all of a sudden now, they once were with you. They once were your friends. They once were, you know, they saw deliverance. They saw breakthroughs. They saw God's hand move. They saw things happen for them. Now, all of a sudden, you they move you out of the group. They they operate around you. You cannot hear from them no more. They move around you. They now, uh, uh, they're on everybody else's page. But yours, that's because, that's because they've heard someone say something. They've listened to the lie of the serpent. They've been embroiled in marine powers. Leviathan has gone to them. Leviathan has gotten hold of them. And now they hate you with a cause. They don't like you without a cause. They are, they're turned off from you. They, they no longer want to uh, communicate with you because they also know how they've been talking about you too. See, let me tell you something. When God is moving some people out your way, let them go. You hear me? You try to run after people who don't support you. They only want to take from you. Every time you turn around, there's a problem with you. Or there's some accusation they're bringing against you. Or something they want to just pull, pull on you. When God moved them out of your life, thank Him. Do not try to rec reconnect with those people. Do not try to re reconnect with those people because the Lord has been exposing the marine agents and removing the marine agents. See, some of them could stay on your life and they'll say, Hey man, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord. And get delivered, get set free. Then turn around and try to even fight against you. Mind you, you set them free. God will use you. Yes. God ain't coming out from heaven. He can use people. Many of these people who got set free from the ministry, some of them, they've decided that this is what they want to do. God bless you. Keep moving because guess what? God is still God on the throne. Amen? We all have to answer to give an account to the Lord. But you see, my, my problem is that I am not going to battle with nobody. I am here to set souls free. I'm here to fulfill the call of God in my life. I'm not here to to get caught up in you saying I say and to pull nobody down. We're here to fight spiritual wickedness in high places. But what happened is the marine agent and the marine spirits will build the person up to make them hate them, make them want to fight them, and they don't even know why. That's because there's a fire and a spirit that is inside of them now that is pushing them away. That's why you've got to keep on moving for God. Because men will fail you. Hearts will fail you. People will fail you. People, no matter what you do for them, they'll turn around and say, you never do nothing for me. They'll turn around and say, you never do nothing for me. I don't even know why I even, I even, even was, was, was cool with you. Because you know what happened? That's that power that is operating in them. And if you and if you get caught up, you know what happened? Your heart will be broken every time. That's why you got to keep it moving. Love them, but keep on moving. Because there's a marine power that's working to destroy people's life. And to make you to be the culprit when you only did good for people. We've seen some people got married into the ministry. We've seen some people got breakthroughs. We've seen some people get all kinds of things. And we, rec we recognize that this is 
This is what happens when the enemy is trying to destroy or stop those who are moving in God. Whenever you're moving in God, whenever you're going, uh, doing things in God, the enemy will whisper into the people's lives. You hear me? To try to turn them off or turn uh, turn you off from them. you got to recognize you're not dealing with the individual. You're dealing with the powers behind the scene. You're dealing with powers that do not want to see you prosper. You're dealing with powers that want to break a friendship. Amen? And let me tell you something. Marine agents, they have money. They have all the money because the sea contains all the money. They own all the networks. They own all the businesses. They own all the all the profitable ventures. That's what they're doing, guys. Listen, these wicked spiritual powers, they will make you turn off from your helper. They will bring the wrong person in your life. Oh my God. To create all kinds of all kinds of, of backwardness in your life. Have you ever been doing so good? And then all of a sudden a person comes to your life and you're wondering if this is the person for you? And then when the person gets in your life, they treat you so good at first. They whine you, they dine you. I mean, they say all the things you want to say and you want to hear and you know, man, this, this could be the person. So when you dig a little deeper, you find that they lie a lot. You find that they've been misleading you. They find that they've been, been, uh, they've been misdirecting you. They, they cheat on you. They, they, they have all kinds of habits that they can't break and they don't want you to they don't want you to stop them from breaking it. They turn it to be supreme narcissists. Every time you try to bring out a problem or issue that is underlying, they flip it and make it seem like you. They gaslight on you. Let me tell you something. Anytime you find a person gaslighting on you, I don't want you to even think for a second. They are from the Marine Kingdom because they'll make it about you. And they'll turn around and flip it so you'll now begin to backpedal and you're not a guilty one. All right? And they'll never own up to the responsibility you're dealing. I don't care if they're a narcissist or a sociopath or a psychopath or a vampire spirit, they all come from the marine kingdom. They will make you feel guilty. They will accuse you. They will try to boycott you. They will try to spread rumors. They will they, they will, they will come with all kinds of things about you because they have been assigned to destroy your work. They were sleeper agents. Some of them didn't even know that they were there to, uh, to be sleeper agents. That's why when God moved them out of your life, sign God because now God can elevate you. Now God can promote you. Now God can remove the chains from around your neck. God is removing some chains from around your neck. Mighty God. God is going to remove some chains from around your neck. As a matter of fact, there are some people, you have a marine husband, and you have a marine wife, and they are angry that you haven't, you are, you're seeing someone, they are angry that you're about to get married, and they are doing everything in their, pro, in their powers to stop you from ever getting married. Why are you 41? And you have seen your cousins, your sisters, everybody else get married except you. Why is it every one of your families them can't stay married? And many of them, many of them have fibroids or they have tumors in their body. Every single one of them have tumors. Every one of them can't stay married and have tumors in their body. Why is it that why is it that the man will look at everybody else but you? Or they want to friend zone you. Have you ever been friend zoned by someone? Huh? They want you to share their dreams, interpret this for them. Do all this for them, but they friends on you. They got you doing all the work for them and, and catering to them while they are they're caught in someone else. I decree in this season you will not be friend zoned. You show the person you're interested. You give them all kinds of clues that you like them. You 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 let them know by without without being over flirty that listen, I'm interested. Yeah, they still want to friend zone you. And and they want to keep you as their friend and, and come and ask your opinion about another person. And they've taken up all your time, wasting all your time. All right, you solving all your problems. Listen, you are not the counselor. Do not allow them to, to fight frog with snake, as we say in the Bahamas. Don't you fight no frog with snake. But if they want to move on, fine. But don't waste your time and don't waste my time. Because someone just told me, said, listen, man of God, you don't know how bad I feel. I was with this man. I gave this man money. I gave him all my time. I sacrificed for him. He, have, he didn't have to pay a bill in this house. You hear me? I did everything for him. And then a the man turned around right on... on so right on, he was he was he was talking to me on the live on 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 on, on Facebook, you know, private chat, talking to me, and, and and telling me how much he loved me. And the next day, married someone else. She said, if it wasn't for God, I'd lose my mind. I'd lose my mind because, as far as I'm concerned, he was going to marry me. And we already talked about this. And he went and married someone. That means he was carrying this affair behind your back for the longest time. Oh my God, that means that was going on for years. That's why. You couldn't, that's why he's always complaining about your cooking. That's why he's always angry with you. That's why he's always fighting with you. Anytime you say something to him, he get angry or get mad. Anytime you try to, you know, to bring out a problem, he get mad and, and, and cuss you out and rile you out. Why? Because he knew in his heart that they'd already have him. They'd already planned this thing, that they'd already done this thing. 
and now you are you will fight you and beat you too that means that they already that have him the marine powers already that have him they, they that have him uh caught all right and now they're fighting him he's not fighting you uh it's the people through him that are fighting you that have him hooked you know I mean? and most time he already eaten from them one of the quickest ways for you to get trapped is to eat from the marine agents because the marine agent already been prepared that's why they say eat in front of me right now I can't home later and I can eat later. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I prepared it for you. I took my time. Uh, uh, you ain't getting home. You got to eat this. Uh, you got to just eat this in front of me right now because they want to make sure that you eat the food so they could get a deposit on uh, in you so they could so they could start. You can start seeing all kinds of dreams and mirrors and you can see all kinds of powers and strange things coming to your dream and all of a sudden you hook. You lose your desire for your wife or your significant other. You lose your desire for your husband and now you find yourself lusted after uh this other woman or this other man or if it's a woman you find yourself lusted after another woman yes these marine agents turn women into lesbians and then want them to get married and then want them to get the blessings of of, of churches and people and want them to sit up in church and act like everything cool huh and then want to turn men where they no longer have no desire for women and they burn a desire for for other men and get married and sit up in, in churches and, and 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 go to church and serve in ministry and even sometimes become pastors amen but yet you have a you have a use of mind you have a husband you use a woman you have a, a wife and yet you are a pastor and you are you want normality and you want kids and you adopt it you see how this agenda is coming from the marine kingdom this is the Sodom and Gomorrah all over again they worship these things long time ago that were amphibious and they were they were they were morphodites in their in their in their makeup they were both men and female they had both organs and some of them they could transform and take on whatever form they wanted to and so they could do whatever they want to do in that area because that's what they worship and so they find that the world is now going after that so now you have to find out what you are yes and even if you're dating someone you can find out one of the days you can just in the back of the day you can just date a man or a woman and that's it now you can find out what were you before because <laughs> they got some men that are prettier than women listen guys this marine kingdom got some women that are more masculine than men they look like a man they got they got all the equipment they got all the chest they got the bed but you you know you don't know that because they look mask they have more masculinity they more buff they got more chest they they got more bass in their throat their 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 voice than men but you don't know that all right so you gotta say what were you before you know what were you before what do you, what are your births they can say and this is the life we live now because you could find yourself if you're not careful marrying marrying a man who now look more pretty than women some of them on facebook women ain't got nothing on these guys you hear me and they take it hormones to change their voice but you know when they talk you can hear like oh yeah this guy got some bass because they're in process they're in process of taking it and as soon as they find enough money they get more hormonal treatment they can literally change their voice to a feminine voice and they are going to get all the equipment. They got brass. They got they got the hips. They got the walk. They got the they got the shape. They got everything. They look and act like a woman. They got them who act and look like a man. You hear me? You wouldn't know unless unless they tell you, unless God reveal it to you. You gotta ask, what were you before? Can I see your birth certificate? Can I see your passport from you small? You know, because some of them they had the operation done. They went under the knife. They are totally another person and so you'll find yourself marrying or get involved with someone who's like that this is that same spirit hallelujah that is that is designed to mix people up amen and that's the same thing where they be lovers of themselves you know and they'll find themselves uh, uh they find themselves given over to that reprobate mind and that sexuality is a perverted sexuality something that god made true is the serpentine spirit uh, and they lay their eggs in people. They lay their eggs in people. That's why people feel these movements in their belly. They feel cysts and fibroids that in there. They feel things moving in their stomach, moving in their in their intestines, moving in their throat. There's someone you've been having a throat itch and cough for almost a couple of years now. You've been having a throat itch and cough. It's like a chronic throat itch and cough. You've been having that for the longest time. There's a throat itch. And you've been you've been spinning the plan for a couple of years. It doesn't want to go away. I cancel it over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse this thing that has attached itself to your throat, your spine, and your throat. There's someone with low back pain, low back pain, 
you been to chiropractors, you've been to specialists, you've been to therapists, and you still have the lower back pain. Hallelujah. I break this power over you right now because there's a serpentine power from the marine kingdom that is uh, attached to your back like suckers. It looked like something from Alien. It looked like something from Alien. You watch the movie Alien? People think those movies that they see in they think that they, they're just people of imagination. No, they're actually coming from the dark kingdom, the dark world. Amen? They're coming from the dark world and they're representing them or representing them as fiction or as fantasy. But they're actually spirits. They're actually demons. And this thing has been stopped in your back. Literally in your back. And you've been having back pains. Back pains. And you even contemplating surgery. Hallelujah. I prayed for someone recently. I told him, say, you have vision coming back. The Lord said, your vision coming back. And they just told me, so listen, my vision came back. Hallelujah. I, I think they got the surgery, uh, uh, but they were blind for a little while, but now they can read and see. And I told to another person, I said, your sight coming back. Praise God. And I prayed over the person's eyes. They went, they go for surgery. The doctor said, your sight coming back. You don't need no surgery. And so and, and, and so God sent them back. They, go, they went to another country to get surgery. Despite the fact that God told them, your eyesight is coming back. Don't worry, we rebuke it. But it's going to come back gradually. All right? It's a gradual thing. And the doctor told him, so listen, we can't operate on you because your sight is already coming back. The process is already here. All right? And so you already you already can see. Do you know <coughs> there's something called phantom blindness? Do you know you can see? And because the enemy can trick you, <coughs> there can be something called phantom blindness. Where you can't even see, but you nothing wrong with your eyesight. Because they put the skills of your eyes. Do you know someone could get their hand cut off? And they can still feel their pinky hurting. They can have excruciating pain in their thumbs and their hands and the hand in there. The foot could be cut off. <clears throat> the whole leg cut off. Yet they feel their leg giving them pain. That's not the pain itself. That's the memory of the pain. That is the memory of the pain. Because your synapse gaps in your brain and your, your central processing system and your memory, your amygdala, that is responsible for memory, and your reticulated, your reticulating activating system has stored memory in your subconscious of that pain. Some people are hurting and they have a migraine headache because it is not a real migraine headache. It's a phantom headache. <clears throat> it's a phantom sickness. It's not real. But the enemy is projected into your senses. That's why faith does not, does not, I will not work by your parents or by feelings. I'll say it again. Faith will not work by your parents or feelings. Some of your feelings is lying to you. Some of your feelings is lying to you. Marine agents know how to amplify your feelings. You'll feel like, man, I have a heart attack. You'll feel like, you know what? <clears throat> my liver, my lungs, my chest. I can't even breathe. There's nothing wrong with your respiratory system. It's the... of what they're setting based on the memory that you have because of the pain and the trauma that you experience. They will cause you to relive that trauma, that pain associated with it. And we prove it that people with missing ears can feel their ears itching. The ears ain't there no more. The feet ain't there no more. Why is your feet still itching? Just imagine. Sorry, guys. I don't know what happened. It went out for a couple of minutes. I'm sorry. I had to rebuke it. Amen? Marine agents, they are what we call problem expanders. They expand problems in every area of your life. They arrest people's progress. They arrest it. They make you feel like you're not being healed. They make you forget the prophetic word. They make you feel that like the prophetic word is a lie. They make you feel like you're watching in vain because they do not want to see you get healed. Mighty God. They don't, they don't, they don't want to see you get blessed. I'm releasing this word to you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover Donna's eyes. I cover Donna's eyes. I release your eyes right now, woman of God. I decree your eyes are being set free in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree your eyes are being set free. I decree right now, Lord. I release and pray for Donna's eyes right now. And I decree that her eyes will be pain-free. Her eyes will be pain-free in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of pain over her eyes. I release and command those demonic kingdoms to be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I decree and declare that your life will shift. Your life is shifting. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I collapse those demonic, those demonic kingdoms that are over your life. The dark kingdom and the headquarters of the satanic world is located in the second heavens. <clears throat> this is not this is not the real heaven. It is not where God dwells. This is this is this is the second heaven. 
because we got the atmospheric heaven, then we got the heaven above that. All right, the atmospheric heaven is where we are basically in the atmosphere where planes fly and, st and stuff like that. But there's another level of heaven. All right, is that's where the enemy has been sent. Amen. That's where he headquarters and reigns from there. All right. This is the, this is the headquarters of evil. This is the, the powers of darkness. The human eye can't see this. The human eye can't detect it. Only the Lord can open up your eyes and reveal it to you. Like how you had to do with Ezekiel, how you had to do with Daniel. He had to open their eyes. He had to show them with Isaiah. He had to open Isaiah's eye. It had to take near death for him to see it. Amen? That's why God is saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, open their eyes to let them see that there's so much angels around them. Hallelujah. Let them see the angels all around them. Let them see that these marine powers that have been trying to hold them down and hold them back. Hallelujah. From, from ever experiencing the power of God. I cancel that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because you said in your word that the kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violence taken it by force. I decree that whoever is holding your blessings right now will release it. I decree that whoever is holding your business, whoever is holding your breakthrough, whoever uttered a curse against you, whoever muttered a curse against you, whatever that altar is, whether it's in the sea, whether it's in the atmosphere, whether it's in the heaven, whether it's in the actual realm, every spiritual border police that has been policing your destiny, Every spiritual checkpoint that they've been holding on to your blessings and been holding on to your agreements and been holding on to your increase and been holding on to your uh, to your marriage and to your restoration of everything that was stolen from you. There's someone you've been, you, everything been stolen from you, mighty God, someone watching right now. Everything that's been stolen from you, Jesus, you, it's, like, it's like you suffered the trial of Job. It's like you went through the trial of Job, mighty God. It's like everything was pulled from you systematically. Can I tell you, can I tell you that that was a curse that someone said against you? Oh, Lord, they get, they get mad at Prophet Peter. You angered someone. You angered someone and said something to them. And it might have been because of some sort of bill. You got an argument over a bill. You got an argument over a bill. You got an argument over something. You were querying a bill. And you told the person, listen. That's it. I'm not going to pay this money. You ain't, you ain't getting one ounce of work because the work was shoddy. I don't like the work. I, I, I don't like the work and I'm not going to pay you for this. And the person, the person needed that money so bad and they, they spent all of their, all of their um, life they had on the materials and the stuff and they got nothing back. And that person cried out to God. And the person cried out to God. And that's why you lost what you lost. Thank you, Jesus. I remember... I remember this man. I went and I did all his work for this man. I did all his work for this man. He was a major contractor. You know, and I, I went and spent everything I had to do the job. And I did the job well. And I, I spent everything I had. And I presented my bill to him. And he says, he says, he says, uh, he says, son, I ain't paying you none of this. He said, this is what I pay. And this man gave me, he gave me like one tenth of, of, of what I'm supposed to get. And then, let's say I'm supposed to get like, I was supposed to get like three thousand, four thousand dollars. He gave me like a uh, like two hundred or three hundred, and he said, "This will be getting, and that's that. That's that. I don't pay no more than that." And he said, "I don't care what you spend out. That's just the way it is." And man, listen, my heart was broken, and I was so hurt because that man crooked me, that man stole from me, that man didn't need to do. He's already, he's really, he's, he's already on his way to being a multimillionaire. As a matter of fact, the project he was, the project he was building was worth over $4 million. The project he was building was worth over $4 million. You know I mean? He was he was, a, he was he was about the profit, probably, let's say take a million dollars to build the building. He was going to keep almost $4 million, $3 million of that. You know I mean? That's how rich this man is about to be. But guess what happened? Two weeks from that, when I look again, the inspectors condemned the building. All right? He couldn't get that pass. If he couldn't get that. He couldn't get his, his billing pass if he if he had went to them and presented that money to them. They condemned the billing. The billing fall down. They took the contract from him. Yes, the, the walls fall down on the billing. The walls the walls fall down. The foundation was condemned. You hear me? And they had to call in another contractor to to to, to correct his work and to do his work. And they took the contract from him. As a matter of fact, they put him in court for breach of contract and for shabby work. And so he ended up with nothing. He ended up, ended up paying the people maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars because he didn't do the work the way it's supposed to be done and wasted the time. So God answered my prayer in that, in that, 
I was avenged. Many people don't understand. You took from people in the time of need and you don't have to do it. You didn't have to do it. And so because of that, you need to say, Lord, show me what I've taken from people and how I've mistreated people. And the Lord will bring it back to you. And he'll restore you. But you've got to get away from that spirit of pride. Leviathan won't allow you to say, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did this to you. How can I make restitution? Or please forgive me and close that door. But people, they'll, 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 they'll stay in their pride and never move on. And you hear me? For the for 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 the three thousand dollars he was to pay me, he lost he lost over five million dollars. He lost over five million dollars because when you have to pay those people in court and they, they charge you, I think they charge you like a thousand dollars a day every time you mess up. That's a penalty. I know because I do I do a lot of uh, work and if you if you live on the contract, you get charged. They, they take out so much every day. You hear me? Because he decided that he wanted to allow those wicked those wicked marine powers to use him. And to steal from uh, from from an up and coming businessman, uh, uh, and because he felt that he could take advantage, and probably didn't like how I was moving, probably didn't like uh, uh, you know some people look at you and they just don't like how you're moving, and they wanna they wanna they wanna just humble you, and they wanna speak down to you, and they wanna talk to you any kind of way, you know. And I said I said I said I, said, I respect you, man. I said you know I respect you, and always looked up to you. I thought you know I I didn't I didn't expect you to treat me like this. All right. And after this day, he see me, and when he see me, he, 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 he put his head down. He knows that he was judged. I didn't have to do nothing. Amen? Sometimes God will take up your cause. Sometimes God will take up your cause against those that fought against you and stole from you. And they know they could have changed that. It was in his power to write a check, but he, he wanted to bully me. He wanted to show me that he's the man with the power. Yes, you already have the power. You already got a million dollar contract. He noticed. We, 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 we are happy for you. You know? Yes, one guy told me the same thing. He threw a check at me. He said, you need to learn how to calculate. He threw a check at me. I said, with this, go buy, go, go buy a calculator. You can't calculate. That man, that man, that man suffered a stroke so hard and so serious. Yes, touch not God's anointed, nor do his prophets no harm. There are some people who did you wrong, and they did you wrong, and they won't repent, and they did you evil, because they were motivated by these dark powers to attack you. And when I saw him the other day, he walking, he was walking right in. He couldn't, he couldn't hardly even walk. Amen? He couldn't even hardly walk. He took the check and threw it at me. You know? And go buy a calculator because, you know, you don't even know how to calculate. And then he turned around and then and the next time again made me spray. You know, see, it took me four days to spray this estate. It was so big. It was four days. And then tell me, tell me, say, he ain't paying me. Because this is this, uh, this, uh, from a friend he know, say this on him. And and he never paid me. And when I saw him again, he was walking right there. Listen, God will remember you. You hear me? And I didn't pray nothing on him. I didn't say nothing about him. I said, Lord, you see me this man do. And I said, Lord, I leave it right there. I said, Lord, I love him. And I kept moving because I couldn't focus on it. I was so hurt because of the fact that he, he was so duplicitous. I said, you got the money, man of God? I said, you got the money? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry. Just do it. Do whatever needs to be done. I got you. He made me spray all the yard. He made me do all the termite work. This thing must be about fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. And the man turned around and said, uh, "Say, uh, check his friend, his buddy. Uh, he said that's on him." And I said, "Well, Jesus help me." <laughs> it's been almost again. Use everything I had. I, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. But when I saw him again, he was walking like this. Arr, 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 arr. Can't talk. God will fight your battle, and I didn't wish no harm on the man. And I know that God fought. It didn't happen right overnight, but God will take care of you. You hear me? God will take care of you. Every strong man of the marine kingdom that is fighting against you, God will deal with them. God will deal with them. When they touch you, they might as well touch Christ. You hear me? Because you are Christ. You are his child. You are his, you are the beloved of his life. Amen? And, and God sees what they're doing to you, though. Know? He sees what they're doing. He knows what they're doing. And he's going he's gonna to exact that vengeance on them. These wicked spirits that have been trying to control you and trying to keep you back and trying to fight you. God sees it. God knows it. They've been talking about you. They've been lambasting you. They've been saying you everything but a child of God. God says, don't answer them. Bless them and move on. Amen? Bless them and move on. People come at you and you want to minister to them and tell you, no, you ain't a man of God. You, you, you preach in the funny gospel now. And you minister to them on so many levels and have them get set free on so many different levels. And, and you and you and, and you and you 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 minister to spend hours on the phone. But see what happens is what happens is they allow these spirits to use them and they get in their flesh, they get in their arrogancy, and the Lord is exposing them. Some people can't take correction. The minute you correct them and say, listen, this is that, they turn around and cut you off. They won't hear from you no more. 
because they get their pride, they get in their feelings. The spirit of offense is from the marine kingdom. Don't you see Leviathan? Leviathan gets offended if you try to correct him. You cannot bribe him. You cannot even say nice things to Leviathan. You cannot negotiate with Leviathan. Leviathan will not be negotiated with. He will not be negotiated with. I'm telling you right now. Leviathan cannot be negotiated with. You can't fight Leviathan on your own. As a matter of fact, you cannot. You cannot fight him. That's why people feel like they drown him. Do you know how Leviathan look? Leviathan look like a crocodile. You hear me? It's almost like a crocodile. It's a serpent dance spirit. It also has crocodile features or dragon features. Do you know what a dragon, do you know what a crocodile does to you? Do you know how to kill you? They don't kill you by just biting you, you know. They kill you by dragging you underneath the water. And then they twist and twist and twist. That's why it's called a twisting serpent. They twist you and twist you. Have you felt like you're in a whirlwind? Have you felt like you're in a twister? Have you felt like you're in a tornado? They twist you and twist you and they wrinkle off your arm. Then they drown you. They hold you underwater. Then they try to drown you and then they try to twist off. They twist off your limbs. They twist off your hand. If they hold your jaw, they hold your hand. They twist it off. That's what they do. They spin around and they flip it. And then they take it with them. Then they take you with them and they hold you under there. Do you feel respiratory issues or respiratory problems? Do you feel throat problems? Do you feel neck problems? Do you feel eye problems? These are all symptoms of that dragon spirit, of that same spirit. Do you know that Dagon, that same spirit, is responsible for tumors and cysts and fibroids and all kinds of different uh, issues, particularly, particularly tumors? Tumors. Right now, anybody who's dealing with that spirit of Dagon, that's been releasing tumors into their body, that's been releasing cysts into their body, that's been releasing these nasty problems into their body that doctors can't seem to deal with. I command that thing to go in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says Leviathan uh, scales are so, they're so knit together, they're airtight. No spare can pierce it. Only the Lord Jesus Christ could deal with Leviathan. Have you ever dealt with someone who is so prideful, so arrogant? So full of themselves, you can't get through to them, nobody can get through to them because you cannot even negotiate or there's no compromise with them. They will not even deal with you. Look at Job. Job, wife told him, listen, curse God and die. All his friends came to him and they were lambasting him. All his friends, you hear me? They were lambasting him. That was Leviathan again, setting his friends against him. Why would the Lord talk about a marine about a marine spirit so much when Job was on the land? Because that was was part of the attack. Satan is a he is almost like a like a lord to them. He's their lord. And so what happens is he will set out certain spirits that specialize in destruction of persons' lives. And this is what Leviathan did. Leviathan face is a warlike face of a spiritual creature that is out of control. Leviathan, once he gets hold of your life, will not let go. Leviathan operates in terror and dread. Do you know what is to be held in the water? That is terror and dread. Have you ever have you ever been thrown in the water and you couldn't swim? That was a terror and a dread to you. Many people feel they don't know. It came out of the blue. All of a sudden, this terror and this dread came on them. They don't know what happened to them. Let me tell you what happened. Let me enlighten you. You've been attacked by Leviathan, who is also known as Python, who is also known as Kundalini, who is also known as or oh, alligator. In Egypt, they used to call him Sobak. He was the he was the dragon that lives in the middle of the sea. That's what the Lord dealt with. Amen. Amen. I see Judge Franklin is on. God bless you, Judge Franklin. God bless you. God bless you. Welcome on, my brother. God bless you. There are now seawater crocodiles, guys. These seawater crocodiles are making their ways into different oceans. And they are very, very troublesome. The violent spirit is like that. Amen. You cannot deal with them. These water spirits, they will now fight you. And they, it's hard to break them up. It's hard to get them to stop attacking you. They use fear, terror, anxiety, and panic. Yes, that's what the rain powers do. When they attack you, you feel panic, anxiety, terror. You feel that something is attacking you. You don't know what it is. Because they hide in the waters. The waters hide them. They cloak themselves and attack you from that place of the waters. The waters act as a cloaking device. And the waters act as a concealment. They have water barriers. They have water altars, they have water walls that protect them. They have these things that know exactly what to do. And Leviathan loves to be worshipped. Leviathan loves to be appeased. Leviathan loves to be the number one stunner. Leviathan is boastful, haughty, 
full of themselves. It's a marine demon. Huh? Pride goes before destruction and the Holy Spirit before a fall. Let me tell you something. When you see a when you see a, a person full of pride, uh, full of pride, a fool in his folly is better off than them. You know I mean? Because you cannot correct them. You cannot correct them and they will not be negotiated with. I don't care what you try to do. I don't care how you try to, to talk them and say, you know, listen, <coughs> we can deal with this a different way, man. They will continue to attack you. They will continue to rain horror on you. I decree and declare whoever try to rain horror on you, mighty God, whoever try to drag you to the rivers, whoever try to drag you down to their level, they'll try to drag you down to the level. They'll try to accuse you. They'll come to your face. Let me, let me tell you something. They'll plant doubt in the belief. Let me tell you about the two-prong uh, attack of doubt belief. You know what doubt is? Doubt is, doubt is, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And so, because I don't know, I don't believe. Unbelief is when you know and you choose to believe the opposite. You choose to believe a lie. That is fear of, of Leviathan. Let's say it again. Doubt and doubt and unbelief, they're two sides of the same prong. That is when I don't really know. Like Thomas was called, he was called Thomas the Doubter. Because he really wanted to believe. When he did finally find Christ, he put his, he put his finger in his nails. Uh, he put his nails, put his finger uh, in, his, in his hand. He said, you are the Christ, you are the Lord, my Lord and God. Because he wanted proof, he wanted proof positive. All right? Now, unbelief is when you, you put your hand, your fingers in Christ's hand, touch the nails, and you say, I still ain't going to believe. I can believe something else. I can be atheist. I can be agnostic. I can believe some new age mumbo jumbo. I can go and believe the exact opposite of what Christ teach me. That is more dangerous because you now know. But the Lord says, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. God says, blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe because by faith we will uh, we'll enter into this. Leviathan is antithetical. And he's, 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 he's diametrically opposed to faith. He wants you to operate in the senses. He wants you to be so uh, so caught up in your fear and your dread. He wants to bully you. He wants to bully you and wants to make you back down from him and run to the spirit. He wants to make you feel like you cannot get out of this. Amen? And guess what? They will try to keep you under water. Have you feel like you've been drowning? Have you ever felt like the, the, the cares of this world is drowning you? Have you felt like things are out of hand? Have you feel like you can't catch your breath? Have you feel like you're just struggling? And then all of a sudden, you feel like your heart is like you want to burst? That's what happens. You know, you drown by your heart bursting in the water as well. You feel like you can't catch your breath. You feel like you're in desperation. You feel like, I don't, I don't know what, but I feel so weighed down. I feel weighed down by the cares of this world. I feel like something is... Is, is pulling me down, mighty God. Yes, yes, they will pull you down and they will try to drag you, but I cancel everything that has you underwater. I cancel everything that's been fighting your destiny. I cancel everything that wants to keep you from, um, from ever experiencing God. Pride, mighty God, and fear, they are connected together with this spirit. This spirit does not want you to survive. This spirit will hunt you for days, weeks, months, years. They will hunt you without you knowing. They will wait for you to come to get a drink of the living waters. And then they will wait silently. That's why a crocodile could be watching you for months and years and you don't know. Because that's why they call it crocodile tears. Because they pretend to be sorry. They could cry a river in a pool, but it's fake. They'll come to your funeral and cry for that person. But they'll be faking because they're happy the person dead. They just come there to gloat, but they pretend they're crying. They pretend they're prime and they get caught doing their foolishness, but they're not sorry. They're sorry that they got caught. They're sorry that you figured how they operate. I come to tell you right now that pride, pride goes before destruction and a Holy Spirit before a fall in the name of Jesus. Pride goes before destruction and a Holy Spirit before a fall in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command every spirit that's been fighting you. I command every spirit that's been attacking you. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree everything from the vegetable kingdom that's been attacking you, yes. Everything from the vegetable kingdom. From the vegetable kingdom and from the second heaven where they talk to the plants. Yes, do you know that there are plants that grow in the waters too? There are sea plants. There are sea plants. We see the sea moss. We see the sea amoeba. We see sea things. As a matter of fact, the sea slug is what they use. There's so much healing properties right now. I decree right now, whatever is fighting you from that dimension and whatever is fighting you from that power, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, sometimes these powers in your family, your family could never see you as a man or woman of God you are. They always see you in that old mode. They would not release you 
from that position they saw you in. Mighty God. That's why a lot of people, they are now disconnected from their families. They're disconnected from their family because their family do not value them. And their family t treat them the same way. You know the lady told me? And I told her, I went and I prophesied to her. I said, listen, I know you and your mother have not seen eye to eye, but God says go and make it right with her because a lot of your blessings are tied up in that. Amen? I don't care if she's wrong. I don't care if she... I don't care if you throw a truck on your head. The Bible says, honor your mother, your mother and father that they did to be long. I know she knows some things right, but she loves you in her own way. And she said, man of God, no matter what I do for my mother, I buy the house for her. I pay all the bills. This woman still, still dishonors me. And if I come and ask for some food, I buy I buy the food. She'll tell me she ain't got enough food. She'll tell me she'll feed all my brothers and sisters. But when I come down to me, she'll tell me, say, all the food gone. And she'll feed, she'll feed, she'll feed people who she don't even know. And I'll ask her, mommy, can I borrow $100? She said, you know, I need my money, I'm saving it up. But let me or somebody else come and ask, and she'll give them that money. And I said, woman of God, I said, that's because there's a spirit attached to you. And I said, because there's something attached to you, and because there's a familiarity with you and your mom, you guys are too, so much alike that, that you know, it attacks you. And she said, she said, incidentally, man of God, say, my neck, say, my neck cost me $10,000 to get fixed. So only the glory of God fix my neck. That shows me that there's a marine power that's in operation against her and her mother. There's a marine power that's been operating against her neck because the neck and the spine shows you that it doesn't mean you do anything wrong. It simply means that they're trying to attack your, your, your neck because without the neck, you cannot turn. You cannot turn your head. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. It tries to try to bind you up. Amen? And so that's been, that's been causing. And that's a little bit of stubbornness, a little bit of stubbornness, and a little bit of setting away. Both her and mother, I see you and your mother are very powerful. And you yet you do good and you do well. But there's a spirit that wants to use you. Amen? And, 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 and not that... Not that she doesn't love you, it's just that you gotta get in warfare and you gotta break the spirit. She said, I tried, say, so I cut her off, you know. So I've been talking to her for a little while. I said, Well, you gotta need to make it right. And I said, I don't know you from Adam. And why would the Lord allow me to say, Go make it right with your mother? Because you don't know how long she has. And you wanna make it right with her, at least on your part, you know. Because believe it or not, our parents are doing the best they can with what they know. Yes, some of them are wicked, some of them are mean. But that doesn't mean you must spend all day with them and, and, and go hang out with them. But make sure that you clear the way, at least on your part. They might still act weird, they might still do that, but you know that God told you to do this for a reason. And I say, I don't never met you, first time meeting you, God mentioned your mother, all right? And she said, man of God, uh, uh, why would you do that? I said, well, you know, I just tell me, you know, go make it right with her. Then she talked to me for, for about half hour on her mother and what the mother did. Because, because it hurt her, it hurt her, it hurt her. But also, I saw the spirit of offense operating. The spirit of offense operating. She's been offended. And let me tell you something. That spirit of offense is from the wounds from Leviathan. Yes. From the teeth. The python. They rake that. They rake over. They make you dwell on things. And, and he did me this. And she did it to me. And they said this to me. And you know they, they did this to me. And they did it to me. So people will constantly uh, find you find that pain of your life. Because you keep rehashing that. You wouldn't let the people go. You wouldn't let the situation go. And God has said it's time for you to move ahead of that situation. You got to release them. Yes, they scorn you. Yes, Leviathan is a scorner. It'll mock you. No matter how much you show them goodness and kindness, they mock you. They turn around and come to fight you. You pray for the healing, they got healed. You pray for them to get delivered and they come back now to fight you. Can you imagine that? That's like a snake. You feed the snake, clothe the snake, help the snake. The snake was wounded. And now the snake is well and healthy. The snake come back to try to kill you. And many times we don't understand with people who you've helped that you've been there for and you prayed for. Now they, they come back on their feet. And they go back to that same thing they was into. They might have been back in a strange religion. They might have been back into, into a strange cult. They get healed, they get delivered, and now they're back to that strange cult again. But when they was in trouble, when they was dying, they wouldn't go to the cultic members because they couldn't get them out. They came to the man of God. They came to the woman of God. They got set free. And now, once they're back on their feet, they're back doing that thing again. They're back to their false God. They're back to their false, their, their, their false rituals. They're doing their rituals. You know, they, they, they're back to putting on their cultic ring. Do you know that many people from the Marine Kingdom, they have a ring that they put on? Because it's a sign and token. Many rings that you see look like natural rings. They're not natural rings. They're cultic rings from the Marine Kingdom. And these rings activate the power in them. And so what they want to do is they want to shake your hand with that ring on. And you see them, you see them sometimes when they talk to you, they play with the ring. Why they play with the ring? Because as they rub the ring, they're calling upon that marine power to manifest in the situation to deal with you. I decree anybody that's, that has been operating in the marine kingdom, 
and hide in the spirit. Even a false prophet that has been trying to stop trouble, dig up things. You know, the lady said, she's like, I was fighting her. She was fighting this, this, this person. And I said, I, and she said, the person was trying to dig up things, you know. And I said, I said to them, you're a witch. You're a witch. And the person came and tried to kill me in a dream. And I started to fight them. And I, I was exposing them. And I said, Mother God, I said, you know, that's, a, that's someone who you know, who is not pleased with how you're moving, not pleased with your breakthrough. Uh, they want to fight you. All right? And they, they're someone who you know. And I said, now, in a dream, a woman could be a man and a man could be a woman. So it could be reversal. And I said, but watch, God's going to reveal it to you because I believe you already know. But, you know, you just want confirmation. You already know that there's someone speaking and talking about you and they're stirring up trouble. You know, that doesn't mean they always go into, you know, to someone to get something done. Sometimes what they're saying about you, they're assassinating your character. They're pulling you down behind your back. They're speaking negative about you. They're, they're trying to stop your promotion, stop your elevation. They're writing memos on you. They're passing secret information to your higher-ups or to your, uh, to your, uh, you know, to your supervisors or to your managers or, or those ahead. They're, they're painting you in a nasty picture. All right? And they're slowly, silently building a case against you. But you're going to find out that this is what they're doing. And you're going to say, this is what you are. And they can get angry because you call them. She said, because once she said you were a witch, the person attacked her because they now knew that she exposed them. You were not a friend. You were a friend of me. You were a friend friend. You were a fake friend. You you were a snake that's butting up to me so you could fight her and destroy me. And I, I, I told her, so listen, this thing will manifest. You will see it. You will see it. And your eyes will be open. Let me tell you something. Many people don't even know they're entertaining a snake. They don't even know they're, they're entertaining a marine agent who already have them on the altar, who already call them to ask them how things go and know that they already sent attack at them and they want to know why and how they've been attacked. And they, they, and, 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 and they want to get the gauge so they can say, okay, let's 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 set some more stuff right here because this is what's happening right there. It's working. The thing we said is working against them. I cancel that. I cancel that. Anything that's attacking you, anybody that's using any gem. Yes, one of the things they use against the people of God is they use gem. They use gems from the mineral kingdom. They use crystals. They use quartz. They use, uh, 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 you know, um, um, all these different uh, things they put in their ring. They use diamonds. They use silver. They use gold. They use oil. Yes, they use these things. And they attach these minerals to you. Amen? And so many people don't even know that your, your marriage got destroyed because of marine power. They didn't want to see you together. Someone watching, they didn't want to see you together. And they uh, they, they, they wanted to destroy the marriage. They didn't like how you got married because the marriage was a come up because they did so much things in your life to keep you bound. And so now they destroyed the marriage. And you didn't, you wasn't aware of it. You played into their hands because you, you, you aggravated the situation and you now played into their hands. Do not play into the hands of the Marine Kingdom. Do not play. Sometimes when you're significant, others say things, don't answer. Right? It takes two to have an argument. You know, someone be quiet. I told a couple, I said, listen, be quiet. Because every time you say something, all you're doing is mounting problems. Yes, you'll restate the case. Don't go run on and run around because you're giving, you're giving those marine powers and marine agents more power to fight you. Say, state it, and then pray. You have, you have, you have weapons, your weapons in the canal. By you talking to them, all you do is escalating it. The person, the person might be saying, yeah, this, that, yeah, this, that. Before you know it, the police pull up to your house. Before you know it, I pack up my bags, they're gone. Before you know it, you know, I call my big cousin to come beat you. Yeah, why? Just leave it alone. You know you're not dealing with physical warfare. This month, this month of October, you got to be careful of marriages, particularly godly marriages that have the potential to go and be used of God to destroy the kingdom of the adversary. He wants you divided. He wants you out of that marriage, particularly if you have a bloodline where you know there's a cult in your background, your forefathers, and there's serpentine powers in your bloodline where you always see yourself swimming. You always see yourself in the waters. You always see yourself uh, dealing with strange people. That means that you already are a candidate for becoming an unconscious witch. They're working on you to make you fight. And then you have a spirit spouse attached. That's why you find that it's hard for you and your significant, uh, significant other to come together in that area. Sometimes, all of a sudden, strange, strange things come. All of a sudden, there's a war there. All of a sudden, there's pain in that area. You know what I'm talking about? All of a sudden, there's a war here. All of a sudden, there's something here. Maybe there's a strange dis discharge. You know, because the enemy is doing that so you guys cannot come together because it, it doesn't want to come together because that spirit spouse that you married doesn't want to see you reproduce or come together spiritually or intimately in that area. So it will continue to create problems. All of a sudden, you know, you're thinking about, you know, getting personal, you know, in that time of communion with the significant other. And all of a sudden, you know, you know, your monthly come down. It ain't, supposed to, it ain't due for another two weeks. Why? Because the enemy doesn't want to see you 
and that person ever come together later because there's power when you come together and you uh, you come together um, 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 in the intimacy in the bonds of marriage there's something about renewing the covenant every time you do that you renew the covenant all right now it does something to you spiritually because it's a connection the two shall become one and so the enemy will try to find that and you find that it doesn't want you to connect in that area it wants to fight you in that area all of a sudden you know he take, the man taking Viagra, he taking every type of aphrodisiac you can think about. But when it comes down to getting there, nothing happening. No, 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 no. You know, nothing, no bell ringing. Nothing happening. That's because the enemy, through a spirit spouse, tied that down, tied down. The man, the man, the man's manhood, all right? This is for big people now. Little children go to bed. <laughs> but this is real. Because I'm dealing with it daily. Weekly, we pray for people in that area, all right? As long as you don't come together. Now, mind you, that man could go sleep with another woman. And, uh, you know, hey, it's okay. That will come up then. Uh, the woman could feel attraction for other men, but not for her husband. Yeah, I have a headache, you know, I have a headache. My back hurting. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, you know, my, my tummy's saying something, you know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in the right time. Because it doesn't want you to come together. It wants you to stay like that because it's jealous. Like a, like a woman is jealous. Of a married man, of, of, of a man she's married to, and like a husband is uh, jealous of his wife he's married to, he does not want to see you come together. I bring that over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth because people lie a lot and they pretend everything is, is all together. Christian people, we have we have a phoniness about us. We act like everything is okay, it is not. And you know what they pretend most? In church. And where you've been fought with is the most of your church. Most of them can't tell the last time they ever come together physically. Or it feel like you must be pulling teeth when they come together to get together physically. It's a fight because there are certain things attached from maybe both sides, not even just someone, just both sides. That is real. We need help in this area. We need to expose these things because everybody acting like everything is okay in church because you don't want that person on your business and because, you know, they may be using against you or they may be the ones working on you and there. But at the same time, that's why a lot of people have been destroyed because nobody wants to actually teach on these things because this is what is happening. And this is not a strange doctrine because this is done from the this is from the beginning of the world. If angels who had a higher state, yes, they were higher in a state, and they could come down and decide that this is what they could do. Because God was testing them. God was giving them the kingdoms. Yes. He was giving them to watch over certain people and certain nations to watch them. The men them say, you know, we can make our own self gods. Yeah, God, that's why God trusts you. God will put a person in this job. He said, I can make you a head in this job, this big corporation. And I want you to deal righteously with my people. And you pray to God, pray to God. The minute a person gets in position, they switch on God. They, inf they, 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 in they, they, they enrich all their family, the cousins and everybody else. And they mistreat the people of God and oppress the people of God and deny them. Deny their license, deny their permits. They, 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 they hold them down. They don't have no man or woman of God. They don't have nobody. They have the enemy. They begin to create all kinds of business with their names. And they don't have no one. They enrich their cousin, their family and their own people and, and, and nobody else. And God put them there to be a blessing. And to help people, and they prayed for this. Help me, Lord. Once you put them in position, I can be like Joseph. I can help the people of God. When they get there, they switch on God. They forget who they were. They forget the mandate. They begin to destroy people of God. They use the power that God gave them to bless and to help and to finance His kingdom. Yes, to finance His kingdom and to be a kingdom financier. Many people are called to be a kingdom financier, but God can't trust you because once He put you in position, you can get prideful and you can turn on God and you can use your position. To fight people that's why some people they can only have a thousand dollars on the account and the minute they get a thousand dollars they go back to zero why because the minute they start to get some money they change on god notice how a, a couple will be doing so well when they have all that money the minute the man get a promotion or start to make money what happens all of a sudden now he got sweethearts five and ten sweethearts but he was humble but he didn't have that money why it's because the money now uh, allowed him to have more of what he want to do and because the blessing come because the wife was praying all of a sudden now he he don't want he 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 he, he forget the promotion caused him to lose his marriage and lose his religion with God, lose his relationship with God. So you wonder why you prayed for years and you why like this, why like Because can God trust you? Because the minute something happened, you now partner with his marine powers, and now you lose you lose you lose uh, you, you lose your relationship with the Lord. What about when that business was not doing well? You and your partner was you know hey you was, you was excited but. You were excited about what God was doing. You, you know, you was hopeful, you was humble. The minute you start to get blessed and the money started to come in, in the business, all of a sudden now you don't want the partner more. You start to steal from the partner. 
you want to kick the partner out, you want to keep most of the money, and all of a sudden now, you now starting to what? You start to change on your partner now. Huh? You figure out how you can steal and keep most of the money because now you let the spirit of greed, or I call the spirit of mammon, to control you. I bind and rebuke the spirit of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every strange power passing, strange currency into your life, strange money into your hands, be bound in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every power passing strange money, strange currency, giving you gifts that are not of God, that are in your hands, I curse that thing of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lay hands on your stomach. Some of you lay hands on your stomach. Lay hands on your belly. Lay hands on your stomach and pray with holy madness. God, I break any communication with marine spirits. I break any communication with, with marine altars in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I want you to say, I break any communication with marine powers. I break any communication with marine spirits. In the mighty name of Jesus, lay your hands on your stomach. Lay your hands on your head. And command those marine spirits to loose you now. Come on, take some time. Rabba, come pray with holy madness. Pray like you never prayed before. Rabba, come on, loose me now. Loose me now, devil. Loose me now. I don't want nothing to do in any marine kingdom. Some people went to strange people to get children born. You went and they gave you something. You couldn't have baby. And you went to that woman. You went to that man. And they gave you something to drink. And they told you to do something. You give them money. And then a child born. You know what that child is like now? That child is dedicated to the marine kingdom. That child is dedicated to the cult. That child will find himself being fought. Anytime he will serve God, he find it uh, goes blank. Anytime he will pass exam, he find blank. Anytime he will go do something, he find the doors closed for him. Doors closed wherever he goes. Where we know doors closing in his face. Because they have an issue on him. They have a license on him. They have a legal right to him. And they want him to serve their kingdom because you went to their agent for them to bless you and for them for you to get blessed. And now that child is theirs. And if you don't get in that child, and if that child don't come to them, they end up trying to take the child's life or try to take the person's life. Because they have a right, a legal right, if it's not broken in the spirit realm. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you've seen people shooting guns at you in a dream, shooting arrows, throwing stuff at you, attacking you in a dream. Where do you think that's coming from? That's coming from the marine water kingdom. I want you to say, any arrow shot at me, any arrow shot at me, any arrows, any bullets, any gun, any object threw at me in the dream, mighty God, to destroy my life and to marginalize me and to make me go backwards. I decree anything that has been sent against me from the marine kingdom. I command it to break my Holy Ghost fire. I command it to somersault flip backwards. And I command it to die in the name of Jesus Christ. Any power invoked by the marine kingdom against you, I decree right now, they will die in the name of Jesus Christ. Any power from the marine kingdom, any spiritual baby, spiritual child, spiritual friend. Yes, you could have a spiritual girlfriend or a spiritual boyfriend. You know what it means? That means that you are casual, a casual lover in the spirit to them. They got their husband, but you are their side, their side piece, their side hustle. That means that they only come to you sometimes. You do good for six months. And after six months, all of a sudden things shift. Because now they've come to you. They've left their main wife and come to you now, the sweetheart, and spend some time with you. And so they begin to control you. Any demonized water you drunk, any demonized water they gave you, any, de any demonized food they gave you, I command that demonized water and food to come up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you see a particular dream, keep recurring. If you keep seeing yourself at a certain place, at a certain time, maybe it's your old neighborhood. Maybe it's an area where they're known for their foolishness. They're known for their occultic, uh, 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 you know, uh, works. And you find yourself always there. That means that they're building an altar against your life. And money is changing hand. That means they sacrifice something for you. That means they sacrifice for you. And they're spending plenty of money to bury your destiny. I decree and declare, in the name of Jesus, any recurring dream, that means you must take it serious. If you keep having the same dream for different variation of the same dream, that means God is saying, take it seriously. They're trying to bury your life, bury your career. They're trying to kill your children. They're trying to bury your children. They're trying to block your children from being blessed. I decree right now that you will not return to your village, your town, your old school, your old neighborhood. I decree you will not go to your former house or your former partner or your former lover. You will not go there. If you keep seeing them pop up in your dream all the time, that means that they are behind the scene masquerading and they're trying to bring you into bondage. I decree you will not go and you will not be a train for bondage. You will not carry bondage with you. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. Some people, they dream they had a rock or someone give them a physical thing in a dream and when they wake up, they find that the object is in their house. They find that the thing is in their hand. They find that the object is in their hand. How did it happen? When is a dream? That means that they were there in the astral realm and they find that they're being manipulated. They find that even the place where they touch them, the place where they hit them, they find that there's extreme pain and sickness.
sickness from that point on. They experience abnormal sexual life and sexual case, and they now have a perverted sense of sexual desires that they never had before because they are being they're being they're being contaminated and they're being defiled in the dream realm. I cancel that over your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are some people you could never even accomplish getting a simple home when everybody else getting a home. And you can have the keys in your hand, all of a sudden they find that there's something wrong, something here, something here. They find that this happened, that happened, and before you know it, the keys are taken from you again. Before you know it, all of a sudden the money gone that you had for the home. Why? That's because someone doesn't want you to move forward. It could be a mother. It could be a mother. The mother might just like you living in the house because you paid all the bills in the house. But your wife isn't happy. And every time you decide to move, you find yourself back to square one. You save up the money for the deposit. You get the deposit, you get the keys in the house. All of a sudden they find drugs in the house. You 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 find you turn around that they find out that you know there's a miss there's a there's a paperwork ain't, ain't finished done all of a sudden they decide that you know you can't get the house no more you back to square one before you know it, you're gambling you're gambling the money out why that is a marine power and so guess what happened you stay living with the mother in law you stay living there miserable can't do nothing can't cook can't eat lock up in your one bedroom that is a marine power that is working through you and because because the, the power it has power over your husband. If you don't get in warfare and break the power of your husband, you'll stay there for another 30 years. You don't been here 15 years. And you you have nothing to show for it. And now all of a sudden you got the house and the house got taken from you. You already christened the house yet. That means there's a strange demonic power. Strange children are fighting you. Alright? And they're keeping you there. And every time you're about to get a breakthrough, the thing happened where some other issue come up. You can't go into your own house. Huh? Every time you look, there's something. And I've dealt with this case. And the word was spoken. You can get your house. And I see the keys in your hand. The keys came in your hand. Just when the keys came in your hand, guess what happened? All of a sudden, somebody doing an inspection, they find coke in the house. Now the house is an investigation. You can't get in the house. What type of foolishness that is? That's a demon spirit. You hear me? Masquerading and trying to fight their blessings and breakthrough. Uh, because certain powers don't want them to move. Do you know that certain powers don't want you to ever move forward in life? Because it's convenient for them to keep you like that. It's convenient for them to have you there. I decree you will break forward and you will break through and you will be released in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree your ministry will be released. I decree your life will be released. I decree your blessing will be released. Your children will be released. Will be released. Your increase will be released. Your, 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 your inheritance will be released. There are some people who have inheritance for 20 and 30 years and it's still not being released. It's still in probate. It's still being fought. It's still, it still can't get clear. I decree that is broken over you. When we have our next service, guys, come to the service. Because many people have been talking about how they got breakthrough and how when they came to the service, the Lord literally began to set the motion. Some of them might not happen overnight, but you continue to come. Because the enemy will fight you in that area coming. Right? Because he doesn't want he doesn't want you in a prison. And many times people, they've made friends with their marine powers. They've made friends because you know what? They don't want to live right in here. They only want the monkey off their back. And so they go back to doing it. You don't think those demons seen you? You don't think those demons seen you when you're telling the person for a hookup, calling the person for a hookup? You don't think they see you when you're making that call to say, meet me here or meet me over there? You don't think they see it? They're seeing that and they're recording it. You don't think they see when you're lying or certain things and, and, and cheating and doing this? They don't think, you don't think they see you when you have that, that, that thing you're watching that nobody else knows that you're watching? You don't think they see you when you're sneaking out of your house and going down to them other powers or them other people to get things to put on you because you feel like Christ taking too long? Or, you know, the gospel ain't working right now, but I need something else because it's quick. You don't think they see. You don't think the powers of them see. You don't think the main powers are watching you. You don't think that you have been recorded. You've been recorded. The Bible says, the Bible says, be careful what you do for a bird will tell. What does it mean by a bird will tell? It means there are spiritual powers that are act like bird. They monitor you. And they will tell what you're doing. And so you think it's secret, but it's not. Amen? And I'm saying that everybody has secrets. Everybody has things they want to hide. Everybody has things that they want to hide. All right? Well, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking about you consistently, habitually, will not break this thing and will, will not get off the fence and go whole hog for God. But you keep playing and flirting with this thing. Do you know what happens when you take fire in the bosom? You don't have, you know what you know, eventually happens? You get burned. You can't keep going to that woman or a man and expecting God to bless you. You got to be for God or you be for them. I wish that you were hot or cold. But because you are neither, I will spew you out of my mouth. I don't want nothing to do with you because you can't make up your mind. If you if you decide you will go away, then go away. Be whole hog. You know, just go and do it. But don't have me and then have them and water down. Amen.
God wants you to be totally for him, totally into him, and put aside everything that so easily beset you. This is what God has said in the season. Amen? Because you know what happened? It can lead to spiritual blindness. I told you about the guy. He was once faithful. God spoke all the word, even when traveling to go to, to a certain country. He got to that certain country only because of the word was spoken and because we ministered to him. When he get where he's going, he started to get blessed. He cut us off. He cut us off. Stop, stop watching. Come off the Facebook. Cut us off. He came, he came on four years later, three years later. I said, Mother God, I, I cut you off. So I, and I cut you off. Like, I just wasn't hearing it. I just, I just cut you off. And I'm sorry that I cut you off like that. But, you know, as only when he was at his lowest point, he was on a bus. They fired him. He was living, basically living on the bus with his, I guess, backpack, you know. They've taken on the job. Had a good job. All right? God was blessing him. But he broke his connection. See, sometimes people, they'll only get the blessings until they get doing good. Then they tell you, uh, you know, everything is good. That's why God don't really release us right then and there from things. He said, well, why God take it so long? Because he knows your nature. And, uh, and because he don't want to judge you. And because he loves you and he wants you to go to hell. Yes, he keeps you from hell by giving you dreams that terrify you. But also from giving you that blessing until you mature enough to handle it. You wouldn't put a, you wouldn't put a, you wouldn't put a shotgun in a three-year-old hand or five-year-old. Because they can't, handle, they can't handle the gun. And they'll do more damage than I am shooting you. That's what happened. Some man had a gun. Uh, put a, put a, uh, he had a gun. And his baby got the gun and the baby shot him. Yeah, the baby killed man. It was right on you, right on Facebook. The baby got the gun, find the gun, the, the baby aim it at him. And the baby killed him. The baby was, I think, three or four. The baby know what he's doing. Now I I I I meant to say that baby was possessed by a marine spirit. And and the baby pulled the trigger and killed daddy. Now that woman don't be careful, she'll be resenting that child for the rest of her life. You know? But you put the gun there. You cannot put you cannot put you cannot put a gun in a tree old hand. Alright? Yes. Yeah, you can re you can research it if you believe if you don't believe me. Right there on Facebook. This happened like, I don't know, four years ago. Uh, it was a big thing on YouTube. Uh, on Facebook. How did a child get access to that gun? You leave the gun right there so the child can see it. The child see you pointing the play with it, the child think, well, let's fantasy this big belief. Alright, so uh, this this thing coming out here, I don't know what it could do. Alright? And blow the man, blow the man head off. Yeah, the child. I'm saying, this is the same thing spiritually. God can put a million dollars in your hand. I guarantee you, if you don't know how to handle it, you'll be broke within a year time. I've seen people win the lotto. Some of them win, some of them win over a hundred million dollars. And within three or four years, they broke again. Why are they broke again? Because they do not have the maturity or the financial intelligence or the spiritual intelligence to handle that level of fortune and so what happens is they get so crazy and they end up doing more damage as a matter of fact sometimes the people who close to them kill them huh they open to all kinds of stupid schemes and scams all right this woman come right up to the man he must be with a hundred million dollars all right she come right up to him tell her she's a financial consultant she can help him she turn around and kill the man and take all the money because they don't understand that with that amount of money and that amount of of uh, of opportunity you have to have the maturity and the spiritual development and the spiritual intelligence to handle that if you don't have spiritual intelligence and spiritual maturity you will become a victim of your own success and you'll open yourself up to marine powers and you'll wonder why you are in the same place again you need to ask God Lord what do I need to do that I wouldn't do it again why am I in this position it's because there are some things that might have happened that you might have not been aware of or the enemy has used a mask you would blind you because it doesn't happen in a vacuum. If your marriage break up, yes, it could be the husband or it could be the wife. But you need to say, God, what did I do that was wrong? Then you need to check yourself because it takes two to tangle. All right? It's just not the other person. There are some things I made. Take responsibility for your action. There's some bad decisions I made, Lord. I made some bad business decisions with the money. You know, I didn't treat the, I didn't treat the business like a money, like a, like a baby. I kept taking from the baby, kept taking. If you keep taking from your business and you keep spending for more, you have coming in. What's gonna happen? You can end up buying crop. You can end up, you can end up uh, closing your business down. You cannot keep taking from something and you not you not bringing it in. You got to your 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 income must exceed what you paid out. Amen. You must bring in more than you that more than you're spending out, and then you have to know when to hit and the hole, and you have to know when to budget and to put this aside and put it aside, and you must be disciplined. See, the reason why we end up with these marine kingdoms and these marine altars, because we lack discipline, because we want everything right now. And so these marine agents will promise you instant success. 
Ain't in this, ain't in that. That's why people keep falling for scams. And they end up getting caught in these scams. And you know what happened? They end up angry, frustrated, mad, and they feel like God is a liar. But God is trying to show you, hallelujah, that diligence and hard work will pay off. Amen? And that God is trying to teach you something to give you building blocks. Do not despise humble beginnings or small beginnings because by that, when big business crashing and falling up, you could go back and reduce yourself back to small measures because you know what it, you know what it took to get there. Amen? That's why people come up instantly sometimes. They come up so big and so fast. And all of a sudden, you say, where it is? You don't see them no more because, because they didn't have no building blocks. They didn't have no character. If you don't have character, you will not be sustained. If you don't have character, marine powers will eat your lunch. You have to have character and you have the development, amen, and discipline and self-control because, you know, if you spend and spend it, everything you see, you won't buy on TV. Everything you see, you won't buy on Amazon. You, you know what happened? Eventually, you can become a consumer, not an investor. Most black people, I'm sorry to say, we are we are consumers. You must learn to invest in, in profitable vehicles that is going to give you money. You must learn to invest in things that are going to bring in income and that's going to be sustainable. Stop always spending out, always spending, 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 spending. We have become a consumer. And you know what happened? These people who uh, uh, make these ads, they know just how to get you because they know that the black community has a circulation of money that only goes in once. You hear me? The Americans have it for three or four times. The Jews, their money circulates a hundred times. You hear me? The Jews, they figure out the principle of the Lord. Their money circulates a hundred times within their community. Jews are the richest people in the world. I don't want you to get it twisted. Because they found out the secret of finances and how to get rich and how to maintain. You know, they own all the networks. They own all the car companies. They own all of the big business and big corporations. Those Jews own it. The Kazarian Jews and the Ashkenazi Jews, they own it. And I, and I can do a teaching on that. All right? The Ashkenazi Jews and the Kazarian Jews, they buy up everything. They own all of Disney. They own all of Warner Brothers. They own all the major car companies. They are buying out every uh, car company and bringing it under the umbrella. They have the umbrella corporation. They are owning up everything because they recognize the power of repetition and they recognize the power of speaking. They speak every day and blessed and favored. They speak every day at the head, not the tail. They follow the ironic blessing on their hands. Don't mind, don't mind them dress up in a suit. When they go home, they put on their they put on their robes and their priestly garment and they begin to recite that they be teaching their children. They teach their children. I watch white people. I watch white people right here in the Bahamas. I say, well, how come they seem like the white people are always ahead of us? No, 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 no. They teach them financial responsibility and spiritual and, and, and financial intelligence. By the time they, they, they come to the womb, they teach them how to save money. They teach them how to invest. They teach them how to run the business. They show them how to run the business. They teach them how to, to be accountable. They take the same money that we have in spending and they invest it. They teach them how to invest. They teach them how to how to save and put up for a date. They teach them how to uh, uh, to balance the accounts. They teach them these things. And you say, well, why are they always seem like they're ahead? Yet they're a minority. Yet we are a majority. And they always seem to be in financial want. Because they practice sound financial fiscal responsibility. And they practice the, 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 the principles of finances. And they practice the laws of finances and the laws of money. I will, I will do a teaching on the laws of money. The spiritual laws of money. It's very powerful because we need to practice that. And many times we get in trouble because... We are spending and living way beyond our means, and we're not putting up for a rainy day. We don't have investments where we have long-term vision because we are we are a microwave society, and we want a quick hit, and we want it right now. We want it right here, and so we end up even going to banks and billing and buying things when we can bill it out of our pocket and bill it slowly. And then at the end of the day, you might get in your house in too much time, but you're going to pay the bank for another sixty years. You can take for five years to get in your house, ten years to get in your house, but you don't have no payments and you own it outright. And then you have insurance that pays you dividends and fiscal uh, fiscal payouts at a certain time and equity is building up. And so you become financially free. So when you want to invest, you can take that money and buy some apartments. You could buy some uh, business that could, could produce money and you could make it profitable. I want to teach on financial and spiritual intelligence in this season. Many times the money is right there. It's just that you don't budget it properly. And you spend it way more than you should. And you, you're not disciplined in the area. Every night you want to eat or every week you want to buy from Wendy's. No. You need to somehow say, no, sir, we can cook some corned beef and rice. We can cook some, uh, you know, we can buy our steaks. We can get them wholesale. We can look for the best deals. And buy and cook home. Amen? And you find that the food tastes just as good. I'm not saying to be a miser. I'm saying you can go and do things. But make sure that you put up something. Make sure you put up at least about 20% of what you make. Amen? And spend the other 80 or 90. But you put up 20%. 
Thank you, Jesus. Because if not, the Marine Kingdom will eat your lunch. They specialize in stealing your money. They specialize in taking things from you. You buy everything you, you see out there. All right? You buy everything. And then they light off, power off. People go on trips all around the world. And you come back home, you're lighting power off. We have done this thing. I've seen people take money, borrow money from the bank, and travel all around the world. And then, and then put the house up for collateral. And come home and the house get repossessed. All right? The house costs two, three billion dollars, and you get, you get, you get, you get. Let's say you get three hundred thousand. They take your house for three hundred thousand, and you could have the house ten times over. People make decisions based on emotions, and so you gotta have a balance. I'm not saying be a miser. I'm not saying be a spend. You just spend everything you see, all right? You have to have a balance, but you also have to take out, take out God's money first. Take out God's money first. I don't care how they try to slice it. It just makes good sense. Take out God's money first and invest it. Uh, in the kingdom of God, sow that seed and watch it grow. Amen. Plant it in the seed. Sometimes the seed doesn't grow right away because it's going to mature. Amen. And it comes to a maturity, and then you can get the dividends from it. Amen. And you can get dividends from it. You can get the increase. You can get you can get the maturity. And when it comes to term, you can get that money. All right. I know a guy who he bought he bought his motorbike cash free. I say, how you bought the motorbike? He said, well, my money came to term, and they gave me five thousand dollars that I don't want to touch my my initial sixty thousand. And he said, I bought it by cash because there's just disposable money that I have because I'm touching my main money. And I said, wow. And he does that. He does all his cars and vehicles like that. He does everything like that. But you'll see him walk around and you wouldn't know he even have that type of money. See, because they're going to toot their home. They're going to be they're gonna be boisterous and telling everybody you're buying flashy cars and Lamborghini and all these different cars. That's nice if you can do it, but make sure you get it at a good deal. Make sure that you will never you don't have to spend it and just, you know spend three, four hundred thousand on that. But you're going to put that in something, a college fund. You're going to pay for your school child fee. You're going to set it up for for retirement for you know for, for for you know maybe 20 years from now 30 years from now we've got to start to think long term and not just instant gratification uh, instant uh, gratification we got to take the long approach and we got to sit down amen and, and and let god direct us because many times we end up in trouble because we cannot wait you couldn't wait for that man you couldn't wait for that woman you didn't see the red spots you didn't see the, the red flags you didn't see the thing you're doing and you rush into things and you get yourself in trouble you didn't see that the house you buy now that you get from the bank, even though, even though you know it's a beautiful house. You didn't see that by the time they finish paying with you, what you pay for three hundred thousand, by the time they finish with you, you would have paid four million dollars or three million dollars over a period of thirty years. You don't understand that they would have milked you, right? Because that's the that's the plan they have to milk you like that. So we've got to figure out a way how to uh, how to how to beat the banks, and we have to fi we got to figure out how how people can do self financing. Amen. They can self finance you. They can do in house financing. You're the, you're the person who work on a thing where you finance them. I come up with, let's say, let's say I come up with $50,000, but I pay you every month uh, according to what I would pay the bank, and instead of that, I get the house, all right? And at the end of the time, when I finish paying you back, we're free, all right? So you so we can work it like that, where they, you don't have to go through the banks, because the banks, them, they, they look at you, they laugh right now, because they look at they don't they don't care no more, because their money's insured anyhow, so they're acting pretty weird when it comes out of that, and they tell you, you're qualified or this to happen. That. There are some banks that are very good, I must admit, you know, but... Very, very strange. If God is not for you in those banks, you, you will not get your home or you will not get the thing you need. Am I saying that you shouldn't buy a house? Yeah, sure. If it's a good deal, get it. By all means, right? Get it. Do it. You know, as a fixer wrapper, you can do it. Fine. If you can live in your house and, and fix it up, get the house out and no owner nobody, fine. That's even better. Take your time. Do things, um, you know, every now you can do it. And then eventually, you can find out that you, you don't own nobody for the bank. And why they have headaches and they have, a, they have people come and try to take the house, your house got free. You own that. So you already become profitable because now your house is worth $500,000. The day you decide to flip that house and sell that, you could get the full amount for that. And that house will act as an insurance and as a, as a, as a buffer against things because it's an investment and it's land. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why I'm saying this, but somebody needs to hear that. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cover everyone on this live. I cover everyone on this live. There's someone dealing with swollen feet. Who's it that's dealing with a, with a swell feet? Your feet has been swollen for the last couple of days. All right? You've been having pain, uh, like pain in your feet, like, like bone spur. Like your heels, so when you walk, it's painful when you walk because the spur of your bone and your feet, it makes it very painful for you to walk. Someone ears just pop. Someone in your ears just pop. Someone's vision is clearing up right now. Receive your healing. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone you're receiving your healing. Right now. Someone you're delivered from constantly coughing and choking. Every time you turn around, you're coughing and choking, choking and coughing. 
and this is no reason for the happen. Something else is there. Mighty God. Someone you're delivering, you're being delivered from blasphemous thoughts. Someone you're having blasphemous thoughts. You don't even know where these thoughts are coming from. And this thing is coming at you in your mind. Blasphemous thoughts, even blasphemous things about, about God. You hear blasphemous things and you know you don't think this thought. It is popping your head. That is marine spirits that are saying these things. Do not receive it. Reject it, curse it, cancel it, and curse the force behind it. That's not you. Because you know what it wants to do? It wants to defile you. It wants to turn you off from your source. Really get to you. Amen? I, I speak healing to you, man of God, for your kidneys. I speak healing to you. I speak healing to you. I speak healing to someone from tormenting dreams. Tormenting dreams. You've been having tormenting dreams. I know that these, the, those, these tormenting dreams, you're being delivered from them. I command foul spirit to go. Someone, you, you've been having pneumonia, like a pneumonia type of situation. Water in your lungs. I command a thing to come out of you now. Come out of you now. Water in your lungs. Water in your lungs. Healing is taking place right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Someone, you, you've been having hepatitis C-like symptoms. And hepatitis B. Hepatitis C and hepatitis B. I curse that over your life in the name of Jesus. Hepatitis C. Hepatitis B. Jaundice. Jaundice. I curse it right now. Some of you, you have a, you have a family member who have been dealing with bipolar syndrome, bipolar and schizophrenia. Bipolar, schizophrenia. One minute they cool, the minute, next minute they round you out. One minute they, they, they joyful, the next minute they depress. That's a spirit that's been attacking their mind and attacking their body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that spirit to lose you now. I command that spirit to lose your marriage, lose your life, lose your hair, lose you. There's someone, you have property in land. I saw where there are some family members that decided that they want to teach you a lesson. I saw them at nighttime moving into your land and throwing stuff on your land. Thank you, Jesus. And they tried to bury something on your property. I command that thing to lose you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command them to lose you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command diabetes to let you go. Diabetes to let you go. I release the word of the Lord to Shannon Thomas. Shannon, the Lord is saying, saying the season you will prosper like never before. Shannon Thomas, God is opening a door for you that no one can close. Hallelujah. And the Lord is going to bless you from every marine wicked power. Even those that are pretending to be friends. The Lord is delivering you, Shannon. Shannon Thomas, I release the word of the Lord to you. You will prosper like never before. God will open doors for you that you've never dreamed possible. God will divinely promote you and elevate you in the season. God will cause you to even finish. I speak the spirit of completion on you. This is for Shannon Thomas. Because you came on Shannon Thomas, the Lord is releasing his word to you. Now because you are on, the Lord is showing that he's going to bless you and open doors for you. And God is not only going to open doors for you, you're going to see God taking you to another level in him. And you're going to see powers of the Most High God fighting some battles for you. I see sweatless victory. I see you receiving good news and blessings from an unexpected source. The Lord is saying, what you do in the season, they can try to fight, but ultimately you will be successful. They will come against it, but they will not be successful. Everything they try to do against you will only promote you. Every time they come against you, you will you be promoted elevated in the season. Every strange dream and strange personality that has been trying to attack you shall be destroyed, Shannon Thomas. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release this word to you that you will elevate like never before. You and hubby will elevate like never before. You will see God blessing you like never before. You will see the increase of God upon you like never before. You will see the fire of God upon you like never before. Woman of God, because you have not broken their connection, the Lord has said in this season that he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna give you the next of your adversary. I decree and declare that you will be elevated in this season, woman of God, and that God will take you to, to the level where you never thought possible. And God will fight those that are fighting against you. And anybody that tries to stop you in this season from reaching your goals and dreams, the Lord will deal with them. Because they cannot stop you because they want to try to stop you. They look at you and see you as easy. They look at you and see you as, as you know, make it mild. But they don't know that you are a prayerful woman. You pray and you hear from God. And you are wise in the spirit. And the Lord is covering you. The Lord is covering Tiggy. The Lord is covering him. As a matter of fact, doors are being opened for Tiggy in so many areas. Hallelujah. And God is going to bless Tiggy. Uh, hallelujah. As he, as he blesses you, his blessings shall come through you, woman of God. As he takes good care of you, and as he as he loves you, as Christ loved the church, Tiggy will be blessed. Amen. Tiggy will be blessed, and Tiggy will be increased. But as he takes care of you, because you are special to God, you are special to the Lord. Hallelujah! And the Lord is saying that no weapon formed against you, Hallelujah, against your marriage, against your destiny, shall prosper. Says the Spirit of the Living God. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will return your captivity. The Lord will fight for you. 
The Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall remove the marine powers. Can you guys hear me? Someone says no sound. Can you guys hear me? Can you can you hear me? That is the word of the Lord to you. Bonito, the Lord is saying, this is a new beginning for you. Hallelujah. God says he's taking you to another level, mighty God. And the Lord said, you pass a major test. Bonito, this is for Bonito. Bonito, the Lord said he is, he's taking you to another level in him, mighty God. And the Lord is executing, hallelujah, the enemy's plans. Because the enemy had a plan for your life. But the Lord is saying that I'm going to break his powers, mighty God. I'm going to destroy the spirit of pride, and Leviathan, hallelujah, and the narcissist that dwells in the middle of the sea. That demon spirit, that dragon spirit that wanted to fight against you, woman of God, is being destroyed in the name of Jesus. I cast it over you, Benito. And I decree in this season, Benito, that you will move forward. The Lord said, I'm loosing the chains that try to that try to chain you because I see the false gold. There's a false gold that appeared to be gold, but it was fool's gold. The Lord said, I'm getting you out of that. And the Lord said, I'm clearing you like never before. The Lord said, I'm clearing you quickly. I'm clearing you quickly. I'm clearing, I'm clearing you quickly, says the Lord. The Lord says, he, the enemy wanted to trap you. And the enemy wanted to turn things around. Mighty God. Where you will become trapped and you will be miserable. But the Lord said, I'm removing you from that. Because before the genuine comes, there's always there's always the counterfeit. There's always the devil that comes to you with, with, with all kinds of gifts. He comes bearing gifts, but he's a false positive. He's a false positive. He's not the real one. But he's setting you up. He wants to set you up so he can derail you from the things of God. Because you have too much to do for the Lord. And the Lord said, I'm getting you in a situation. I'm removing that situation. I'm destroying that situation. The Lord said, I'm taking you out of that and I'm elevating you to another level in God. And the Lord said, He is allowing you to see that He's with you, Bonita. He's with you and no weapon formed against you will prosper. Even though the enemy will try to make it seem like he wants to get the upper hand. Again, I said, faith has no friendship with appearances and feelings. Because if we go by appearances and we go by our feelings, we will stay moving in a sense knowledge and sense wisdom. You cannot figure God out. And if they attack you, if they try to attack you for the prophetic word, that means you're in good company. Because that means that the enemy doesn't want the prophetic word to come to pass over your life. And the Lord shall make this word come to pass over your life. And the Lord shall cause healing to come in your heart. And the Lord shall cause his blessing to favor you. This is for Manita. Manita, the Lord said, in this season, God is renewing and restoring the blessings. The Lord said, in this season, you will accomplish much and you shall keep much. The Lord says, nothing shall be stolen from you. Nothing shall be taken from you. The Lord said, I'm healing your heart. I'm healing your heart. The Lord said, time and chance happen to every man. And the Lord said, you are coming into a season of prosperity and abundance as the Spirit of the living God. And the Lord says, what he has for you is for you. No man can take it. No devil can stop it. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and out of the sorrow for you. This is for Benita, Anya. The Lord said in this season that you are, you are a woman of God, true and true. And the Lord says in this season that God says, do not take it serious. The Lord says, enjoy yourself. Let there be laughter and levity. The Lord said, let there be lightness and joy in your heart. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, as you begin to worship the, God, worship the Lord and worship God and praise the Lord, He says He's going to turn the captivity amen, and turn your enemies against each other. And they're going to start to fight each other, says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord says, as you begin to praise Him and get in joy, get in laughter, because the enemy wanted to steal your joy. The enemy wanted to trap you. Amen. Hallelujah. And the enemy wanted to have you in confusion. But the Lord says, He's loosing you from confusion. Mighty God. And the Lord says, in this season, He's going to give you your full blessing and full joy. Anita. Anita. The Lord says, get ready. Hallelujah. You can dance like never before. You can laugh like never before. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And the enemy has been trying to steal your joy. But no longer shall he be able to steal your joy, says the Spirit of the living God. For he's restoring your joy. He's restoring your laughter. And the Lord said, I've got you covered, woman of God. And the Lord said, take it out strange that I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. Take it out strange that I've got you covered. Take it out strange that I've, I'm keeping you. Take it out strange that the enemy wanted to take your life. Hallelujah. Because the enemy wanted to cause you to, to, to lose your life by way of accident. As a matter of fact, it's the enemy that tried to push you down. It's the enemy that tried to push you down. It's a marine demon that tried to take your life. I cancel any spiritual spiritual death and any spirit of death over your life. The enemy wanted to try to bring confusion and death, fear and death. I cancel it over your life. You shall live and not die. Hallelujah, says the Spirit of the living God. And you will declare the work of the Lord in the land of the living. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, woman of God. The enemy did form the weapon when he did try to kill you, did try to take you out. But the devil is a liar and all his children. I decree even now that those who are jealous of your home, jealous of your progress, that have even been trying to speak against you, may the Lord 
expose them and judge them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And may the Lord restore and renew you. Every hostility against you in the realm of the Spirit, I cancel it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release the blessings of the Lord. I release the favor of God over you in this season, woman of God. You're going to tell me about this favor. You can tell me about the blessings. You can tell me about the increase. You can tell me how God is doing this new thing for you, says the Spirit of the living God. And the Lord says, get ready. Get ready for good news to come to you. Get ready for some cause that's going to come out of nowhere. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, I'm opening a door for you. The Lord says, you will not go under, but you will go over. The Lord says, even though the weapon form, hallelujah, it will not prosper. I don't know why, but I saw the enemy try to form another weapon in the atmosphere. I saw the enemy try to form something again. They wanted to discourage you from the things of God. They wanted to discourage you from your connection. They wanted you to break connection. But the Spirit of the Lord says that you are going higher and higher in Him. And the Lord says, as you begin to praise Him and as you begin to thank Him, as you begin to worship Him, the Lord says He's going to turn the enemy against against themselves and they're going to fight. They're going to fight each other. And the weapon that wanted to come against you will not prosper, woman of God. It shall not prosper, says the Spirit of the living God. The Lord says, disgracing your enemies. And the Lord says, exposing them. You can find out more lies and you can find out more secrets. You can find out more type of things. Because, you know, it says, high inside his 2020 vision. You can see some things. He's like, mighty God, I couldn't believe this. Because your eyes were kind of veiled. But the Lord is taking the veil off. He's removing the mantle of frustration. The enemy wanted to have you frustrated. And I saw the mantle of frustration. And I saw where the horse of war has been set out against the adversary. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Any satanic linkage to your body. Any satanic linkage to your body. Any arrow that's trying to pierce your heart. I deflect it with the arrow of God right now over you, woman of God. I deflect it right now. In the realm of the spirit. I deflect it right now. Any arrow that wants to pierce your heart. In the realm of the spirit. I deflect it right now. And I command it to fall to the ground. Any enemies of your soul that have been fighting against you. Any satanic linkage, any soul tie from the past. I sever it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now. Every arrow of disgrace will fall by default. By default. You will win, woman of God. I decree any satanic hierarchy from the one kingdom that are trying to dominate your life and dominate the family life. I command it to be broken over your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I curse it at the root. I command to loose you right now. I command to let you go. Woman of God, I speak healing to your body. Even right now, get your anointing oil right now, woman of God, and begin to rub those areas that you need healing in. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command everything done with the sea, everything done with the waters that have been taken against you, woman of God. Even the spirit of Dagon, the spirit of captivity, the spirit of tumors, the spirit of accidents, yes, accidents, freaky accidents, falling down and moving away, fall down. You hit your finger and all of a sudden your finger can't heal. I curse this thing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command the house of Dagon to collapse. I command Dagon to come before the Ark of the Covenant so God could cut his head off. You must bow before God. Bow before God. You see powers, you marine demon, you arc marine powers that have been fighting the children of God. I command you water spirit to loose the living God. I command you right now, right now, Father God, draw out your sore and terrible and great sword and punish Leviathan concerning your daughter Benita in the season in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cut the hair off. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth of the dragon that dwells in the midst of the sea. I sever your neck in the realm of the spirit. And by this prophetic act, I decree it's taking place because there's no distance in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every spirit of depression, frustration that's been trying to plague you, woman of God, I decree right now is broken in the realm of the spirit. God says you will you will receive everything. They will take nothing from you. They will pay you everything back they've stolen from you. You'll receive all that God has for you. And I decree that even now as you surrender more to God and as you get married to Christ, the Lord said, I'll give you your husband. I'll give you your husband. And he will not come to the marine kingdom. He'll not be a marine agent. He'll not be a narcissist. He'll be a man of God, genuine man of God through and through. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command every evil altar that has been affecting your life. I smash it with angelic hammer in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break your power right now. I break your power right now. I break your power right now. I command you to loose the woman of God. Loosen now. Loosen now. Loosen elevation. Some of you, you're right at the cusp of a promotion. And their powers have been holding your promotion right there. You've been promised it. They wrote to you about it. But you still have not been operating in that promotion that they promised you. That's because there are altars 
that have been set in the realms of the waters that are fighting against you because they do not want you to actually operate in the power. They want you to stay there and not get that actual promotion. But you've been promised it, you've been told it. And yet you might even have done some time as acting, but you're not fully in the position. The Lord says in this season, as you take a fast before him, mighty God, he said the strongholds of that marine altar, mighty God, that water altar, that spirit of Dagon, oh my God, hallelujah. He's breaking the spirit of Dagon, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, because you are going higher because they saw your elevation. They couldn't stop you, but they tried to minimize you and hold you to frustrate you, mighty God. Because I saw the spirit of delay, mighty God, from this power that had risen out of the waters. It came out of the waters, mighty God. And I saw, I saw the I saw the individual saying, I need to go down there and get my blessing because you went into the waters. As a matter of fact, you went there as to retrieve your blessing in the waters. You went down to deal with those marine powers, mighty God. And you were fighting, but you got worn out. You got worn out. And I saw that your significant other got left down there. It's like your your it's like your, your partner got attacked by the marine powers. And now she's talking foolishness. Because she couldn't handle the warfare. And so now you wonder why your significant other, your wife is fighting you more than anything else. Your wife is the one raising up against you more than anything else. Because uh, she's been attacked by the marine powers and she in their prison. In the name of Jesus, I come against that prison, the captivity that they have her in. And so she's fighting you more than anything else because they have her held there. Because there's something in her family bloodline going back 200 years ago where they made, they made a covenant with the seas. They made a covenant with the seas. And so they have an altar and a ritual they did. And so now they have an infinity to her. And so she couldn't handle the level of warfare when you were down there because you saw yourself in a dream battling these water creatures under the water. And you had weapons, but you came up and you got out, but she didn't. She's still trapped in that water prison. And because of that, even though she's with you, she's fighting you. She's fighting you. As a matter of fact, she's even been talking to the boss and want to leave. And even other strange men are coming around her. Rakaba, she's entertaining strange men. Because one thing with the marine powers is they, 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 they have anything. Anything goes. Any man that comes out to them, they want to sleep with them because they have a spirit of lust. The marine powers have a strong spirit of lust. So when you feel a strong spirit of lust and you're talking to someone, that doesn't mean it's you. That means that they are operating in that lust. And that spirit is trying to uh, come on you. So you feel a spirit like, when you feel like stuff happening, what happened? It's because they uh, deliver that spirit. Amen? And so I say to you, you need to pray and fast and cover your significant other. Do not argue with them. Do not fight with them. Do not say anything other, other way. Do not use your mouth to pull this thing down. You've already heard the word of the Lord. Why go and continue to fight with your mouth? Do not allow your flesh and lack of self-control cause you to lose your marriage. Because I told you, they are in the marine kingdom. Spiritually, they are in the cage. You need to go and fight it in prayer and in fasting and set them free. Because they was with you. It's just that they didn't have the level of spiritual maturity and intelligence and they had an affinity for water kingdom because of their past and because of their bloodline. You need to fight on your knees and in fasting and pray. Do not fight with your mouth. Do not tell them nothing again. Jesus, Lord, help us not to fight and follow the bait of the enemy, even if they bait you. Do you know that some, some people have come and bait you? Even your significant other, they'll bait you. They'll bait you because they want you to say something because they, they're being used by the, the marine powers. So you can say something that will escalate. You need to de-escalate this thing in the realm of the spirit and shut your mouth. Even though they say some things, take it in prayer. Take it in the spirit. Fight your battle on your knees. Fight your battle in the realm of the spirit. Do not come against this thing with your own anger and frustration and your own carnality. You will lose. And do not go anywhere. Do not move out of the house. Do not go get no place. You stay right there with God. Let cooler heads prevail. Do not go and move because it can give the enemy a foothold that you will regret. This is the word of the Lord concerning you. You know who you are. I do not have to say it because you know who you are. There are several people that are dealing with the situation right now. And I want you to know that that is your instruction. Uh, do not move out of position because feelings and emotions and also appearances do not go with faith. I know some things happened in the past. But if the Lord told you this is how we're moving, you hang on to that. It might take you having to bite your tongue. It might have to take you run out of the side and kick in a tree. You might have to go and take a pill and punch it up on the beach. Do not say nothing. Let the Lord fight this battle for you. Let the Lord correct them. 
because this Leviathan spirit, you won't win. You cannot win against this Leviathan spirit because it's a haughty, prideful spirit. It has them in the grips because they're in a watery prison and a watery grave. That is the word of the Lord to you. If you follow instruction, you will restore your life and your plans and your marriage and you will see your finances taken off. So you speak living God. Amen. That was for somebody. The struggles are really broken. But you now have to follow the instructions. If the Lord tells you, so don't go around this corner. Don't go around this corner. And you continue to walk around the corner. And all of a sudden, you meet some guy there who rob you and beat you and, and kill you. What, 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 what is that? You were the Lord going to start beating you. You're going to send the angels there. But the Lord told you not to go. He said, go back this way. You've been feeling this, this thing, a sense of danger. Don't walk there. Don't walk there. Turn back. Yeah, but I always walk the path. Yeah, but this time, don't walk there. There's someone who will lay there's someone who will lay in you. They're waiting on you because they watch your movements and they know you pass it every a certain time you're doing your walking. They're waiting on you there to rob you and then take your life at the same time. So God said, go back that way. All right? Yes. The Lord is powerful as he is. He said a dream to Joseph and tells Joseph in a dream, go and flee to Egypt. All right? He said, angel, you're going to kill Aaron. He's all powerful. But that was his destruction of that time. Go there and wait till I send word of Herod's death. Then you come back. Now, Joseph can stay right there and say, you know, you are powerful, you are mighty. I can stay right here. That wasn't supposed to happen. The Christ child wouldn't get killed or got caught up in that. Or it could complicate things. And, and it could lose that, lose the Savior. Amen? Because he had to, he had to flee in the night and run to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh, tell, uh, uh, tell Herod die. That's what he said, Pharaoh. <laughs> That's what he was. He was a type of Pharaoh. Amen? So sometimes, Lord say, do not answer the phone right now. What about I? This phone, I, 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 I got to say, do not answer it right now. Oh, but I, I got to go there. The Lord said, don't go to the door. Leave the door. Let it ring. The Lord says, I don't want you to go down here today. I don't want you to do this. The Lord said, that, that thing that the person gave you, I want you to throw it away right now. The Lord said, I'm going to put it in your hand. The Lord said, go break it quickly. No, I, 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 I haven't break it right now. No, no, no. Why do you think the Lord tells you that? Because you don't know what to talk about. You don't know what the gift it gave you. Even though it's pretty. And you find yourself loving up on the gift, you don't get rid of it. And you find yourself attached to it. And the harder, the longer you take, the harder it gets. And before you know it, a whole can of worm, a Pandora's box, will literally open up your life for disobedience. Heed instructions. The Lord said, do not break your connection this season because there's something coming. I told you in the month of October, there's something being unleashed. Where they're coming at marriages. You know what I mean? There are witches flying over people's houses at night time. And they're doing it with demons. And they're cursing people's marriages, particularly cursing marriages. And there are strange debts they're planning for people. And there's nothing wrong with the person physically, but they are sending the arrow of death against them. They're sending the arrow to break connection. People will turn off of you and they don't even know why they turn off of you. People will mad at you and even know why they turn off and they are mad at you. Because it was a spirit that sent an evil arrow against you and against your connection. So the spirit of living God. Because God is trying to show you that this is happening. Because once you are isolated, the enemy can break your hands. And he can keep you awake and destroy you. That's how they beat you. And that's how they destroy you. They break you from your source. They break you from your connection. They break you from God. Yeah, that's why you find yourself in underwater and, and doing strange things because they are slowly defiling you. So you don't have that connection with God. You can't pray. You can't think. That's why they, they attack prayer so hard. That's why they attack prayer so hard. That's why they attack scripture reading so hard. That's why they attack fellowship so hard. That's why they attack relationship because there's something about when the brethren dwell in unity. Amen? But most time we spend time pulling down one another, exposing one another. We exposing this one, exposing that one. And, and we, we fight in the body. We fight each other. All right? Pray for them. Let God deal with that. And you just take it. You make sure your life is okay. You throw in stones when you live in a glass house. When the last you look at your hood? When the last you check your life? Who are you to be accusing people? Amen? Work on your own work on your own salvation with fair and before the Lord. Amen? You fight those marine powers that try to de de defeat you. Do not allow them to use you. Amen? You work on your own life. Stop accusing people. Stop buying up other people to pull people down. Amen? You don't know what a person went through. You ain't God. You you don't, you don't know everything. Amen? You lift them up in prayer if you feel something wrong with them. You cover them in the blood. Amen? And if you can't say nothing, don't say nothing at all. Right? You just be quiet before the Lord. Stop pulling people down. That's the same Leviathan spirit. Same gossip and horror mongering spirit. Amen? Pulling you down. Expecting the worst of you. Amen? Stalking your page. You know they're watching you. You know, you know they're watching you. You know they're following every one of your posts. Huh? But they stay right there hating. Huh? Wouldn't even say amen or thank you or hey, what's up, you know? They stalking you. They watching you. Yes, they watching your page. And they're hoping you fail. They're hoping you fall. They're hoping you never make it. They're trying to gain intel on you. And they're watching you. There's a moral marine agent that's opposing his friends. 
like of Jesus, and they're watching you so they can relate the information to their kingdom and to their to their tribe and to their connection to fight and wage a warfare against you. But the Lord has said in the season that all their weapons shall come to naught. Amen? The Lord said all their weapons shall come to naught. There are some people you have to delete off your Facebook page. Yes, and I want to I want to I want to tell you two books that has that have been I mean literally destroying all kinds of, of occultic altars. Listen, if you get any book, I want you to get this book right here. How to defeat sex demons of the night. And I talk about marine powers, alright? It's been written almost six years ago. This book will help you so much. Give you so much insight. And the prayers are anointed to break yokes. And also, get this book right here. This book combined with this. Let me tell you something. It's like you, it's like you're getting a spiritual nuclear bomb. If you get this book combined with this, it's like a spiritual nuclear bomb. You hear me? It is literally a spiritual nuclear bomb. The enemy will fight you from reading this. He will fight you from reading the Python book. The other book to get is the Python book. That, along with this or this, will help you to see why you've been resisted. Obliteration and power of annihilation. The prayers of annihilation is beyond this one right here. And I've not even released that. I pray those prayers myself because they're just they're so good. I haven't even you know released it yet. But I've, I don't want the next level that is called the prayers of annihilation. These prayers are like nuclear bombs, hydrogen bombs in the kingdom of darkness concerning your cap your captivity and your freedom and for your alleviation. Many people have described to me how they got set free and how people were removed out of their lives and, and it wasn't pleasant, some of them. But guess what? You deal with warfare. You didn't call nobody name. You prayed prayers that are prayers of war, right? Because we're in a war. If they wasn't doing nothing, then nothing will happen to them. But if they work with demons to oppress your life, when that demon is cast out, he goes back to them. Yeah, like a dog. He goes back to them and he wants to take them with him because they sent him, they sent him at you. So now he's angry. He can, he can deal with them. Sometimes that's why, you know, they die. You didn't say nothing. But why are you praying, nasty stinking of prayers against me? Why are you hoping my whole bloodline die? Why are you trying to kill me? Why are you on an altar? Why are you praying these prayers? Why are you reading the Psalms and Scriptures to hurt me? Why are you reading the Black Bible? against me? Why are you spending all this time monitoring me so you can fight me? What did I do to you? And why are you praying nasty prayers? Why are you praying death prayers upon me? Huh? Why are you trying to kill my children, kill my life? Why are you trying to kill my destiny, kill my ministry? Why are you trying to kill my life? Why are you trying to destroy my marriage? You think your marriage being fought like that? You think it's just like that? You'll choose to fight like that? No, that's a, that's a force set against you. And if you don't get this and use these prayers and use this book and get it fast, and use other prayers that are that are awesome. You will discover that there are some demons that so hate you, so resent you. They'll raise up people to pick with you for nothing. And when you when you find when you find yourself when you find yourself doing like that, there's problems. Now, anybody who wants to give their life to the Lord, we can't leave. And um, I, was been, I was reminded, thank you, Lord, thank you, and my wife reminded me. We don't want to just teach like this and not give you a chance to accept the Lord as your personal Savior. If you want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior or recommit your life to the Lord, let me know because, you know, all of this would be for naught if you are not living right. If you're not living in God, it doesn't matter. All right? Because He's coming soon. And I don't want you just say this prayer and not being saved or living right. As a matter of fact, you do yourself more damage. You'll find the enemy even getting a higher hold because you pray the prayers, but you ain't you attacking him, but you ain't got no protection. Alright? So he can sting you harder. Make sure you ain't got no anger, no issues, no offense, no 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 resentment, no unforgiveness in your heart. And make sure you save. If you want to recommit your life to the Lord, or you want to get saved, I release to you right now your spirit of the living God. Say, Father. I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I come to you. I recognize that you're Son of God. I recognize I've been doing things on my own. And I want to receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. And I want to accept you as my, as my Master and Lord and Savior and Lord and Teacher. Teach me, Lord. Come into my heart. Make me a new creature. Let me, let me walk with you. Let my, my name be, be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's simple. It doesn't have to be long. I'm in business with God. To God, I surrender my all to you, Lord. 
I, I, I don't have it all together. I mess up in a lot of ways. But I, I come to you. Have mercy upon me. God hates holiness. He hates pride. You know, there are two people praying, a publican and, and a, you know, and, and a regular person, tax collector and a regular person who's praying. The publican is saying, I thank God I'm not like that one, right? I thank God I'm perfect and I'm well. And the man, the, the man who's praying says, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, Lord. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I, I, I can't even look at your face. Who do you think received God's mercy? And let me tell you something. The Pharisees, they operated in the strongest spirit of Leviathan you can ever think about. The religious folk, they are uh, they are they are the gatekeepers and they will they will take every opportunity to try to chastise you and try to keep you down. Do not get caught up in religion, do not get, up, get caught up in organizations. You make sure that you're with Jesus Christ. You make sure you're walking in truth and holiness, you examine your life daily, and you allow God to course correct you. Amen. We don't all make, we don't all see it, we all miss it. Allow God to course correct you. you mess up. Because we're living in a world that's fallen. Amen? But just get back up with your master. If that is you and you've said that prayer, welcome to the kingdom of God. Get in the Bible believing church. Or you get around a group of people that will motivate you. And you begin to study the word of God. You begin to read scriptures. And you allow God to use you and make your life something wonderful. Amen? Let God take your life and make it something wonderful. Amen? Ask God to take your mess and make it a good message. Let God take your test and make it a good testimony. Amen? We all mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God. No one can judge no one. Alright? Because the measure you judge, you will be judged. Right? By the same measure. You serve God. Amen? You serve God with all your heart. Because you don't know the full story of nothing. There are people that are just doing stuff. They are researching you. They are tracking you. They are trying to find information on you. To try to expose you. But they don't know that their life, their life is being exposed as well. Because when you try to bury someone, you, you bury your own self. When you dig a grave for someone, dig one for yourself. Do not do this and do not get caught up in that same spirit. It is a marine power. It is trying to play you against the body of Christ. Marriages are being fought. Marriages are being fought and they're fighting each other. You think that's you think that's natural? That's because two people have pride. No one will say I'm sorry. No one will say, listen, let's start over again. Let's try it again. Let's let's do this. Maybe we made a mistake. And you find out that they, they separate, they leave each other. Nobody wants to say hi, hello. No one will come and make the first move. Because it's a spirit of pride. And and, and and that pride gets in you what happened? It makes you it makes you it makes you stubborn in your ways and you get set, amen. Lord, please forgive us for the spirit of pride. These marine powers that have been operating. Lord, help us to say, I, I, I messed up. And I need you to help me. You started me to join my salvation. Create me a clean heart, you know me my spirit. If I've been defiled in my sleep and my dream through these powers, then restart me again, Lord. Wash me, wash me white as the snow. Cause correct me, Lord. Scrub me with your with your words. Scrub me with your with your power, Lord. Indwell me. And Lord, help me to release. Help me to release certain things I've been trying to work on my own flesh. Help me to wait on your timing. Amen. Wait on your timing. Amen. God bless you guys. God bless you. I'll see you real soon. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus Christ in Nazareth. And it is the blessing of the Lord to flow over everyone. You will possess your possession. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you real soon.